Good evening, everybody. It's about seven past seven, so we're going to get started. Um, I am going to call the meeting to order if you'd all take your seats. I'm formally opening the town meeting. I have looked at the warrant and determined that a quorum is present and that the return of the warrant is in order. So at this point, I'd ask you all to rise and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty, and justice for all. Um, we do have a lot to accomplish tonight, so we are going to try to move fairly quickly through a lot of these articles, but I do just want to take a moment and go through procedure. So uh, the voting sections will be the section on my left and the section in the middle. Uh, by our bylaws, uh, if you are a non-resident, you are not allowed to speak or to vote. So if you are not a resident, you should be sitting over in the far right. Um, when everybody came in, they should have received the town meeting package. It's very helpful throughout the evening to be able to refer to that. So if you don't have one, I'd encourage you to go up and grab one. Um, our town meeting is run by our bylaws and through a, a publication called Town Meeting Time. So uh, some of it's a bit wanky. So if there's ever questions on procedure, feel free to stand up, get to a microphone, and I can try to explain to you what the procedure is we're following at that time. So um, again, just as a brief review, uh, the, the handout that's been given to you contains the warrant. The warrant is what's published to give everyone notice of what we'll be entertaining this evening. But then the specific articles that are contained in the warrant will be dealt with through motions. So the motions will be made mostly by the select board. Uh, they may differ a little from the warrant articles that you're reading, but the motions are what control. So we should listen carefully to the motions as they're presented. Um, if you do wish to make an amendment to any motion, you will need to make that amendment in writing and bring it to me. Uh, we veered off that a little at the special election, and it was chaos. So we really are going to enforce that this evening. So. Um, you will also hear from time to time uh, committee recommendations. Uh, certain committees have met throughout the year and have worked with the select board on the articles that are being presented. Uh, so their recommendations are meant to also guide you in your deliberation. Uh, in terms of speaking, uh, do we have portable mics, Matt? Or Yes, we have two, two or three portable mics. So if you do wish to speak, if you could stand. Um, the mic will come over to you if you can state your name, your street, your general street address, and then wait, uh, wait to speak at that point. That'll be great. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce the head table. I'm Dan Graves. I'm the town moderator. And going to my right. Lisa Mead, town council. Diana Schindler, interim town administrator. Uh, Barbara Hancock, town clerk, treasurer, and tax collector. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Kip Camosa, selectman. Trevor McDaniel, select board. Carolyn Ness, select board. Bruce St. Peter's, finance committee. John Pachurik, finance committee. Jeff Upton, finance committee and capital improvement plan committee. Skip Olmstead, finance committee. Okay, with that, let's begin. Um, I do have two initial motions. The first motion is that I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarized the content of the article to be considered, and further, that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived, where the articles as printed can, in the opinion of the moderator, be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, essentially, uh, if we didn't have this motion, we would re need to read each and every article that's been presented to you in the booklet. This will allow us to summarize them and move through them a little quicker. Any questions? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. I move that the following uh, people be allowed to address the audience during town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, Brenda Hill, town accountant, Diana Schindler, interim town administrator, Darius Modesto, superintendent, Tina Gemme, principal, Deerfield Elementary School, Richard Martin, superintendent, Franklin County Tech School, Russell Cobras, business manager, Franklin County Tech School, Second. and and uh, Dave Prickett. Second? Second. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're not a resident of town, you're not allowed to speak uh, at town meeting without, without uh, authorization of the moderator. So this will allow these individuals to speak throughout the evening. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Article 1, Mr. McDaniel. 
I move that the town hear the reports of the select board, the Deerfield School Committee, and all other town officers, officers, boards, committees, and commissions. Second. Um, this again is a standard article. Uh, each committee uh, presents a uh, town report that's published, uh, and this, this is a summary of them. So any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Article two, Ms. Shorness. I move the town establish the salaries and compensation of elected officers of the town as contained within the omnibus budget of the town. Second. Ms. Ness? This is just um, what the stipends are allowed by our um, budget. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article three, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town acknowledge the following monetary gifts made in the last 12 months in appreciation for their services rendered. Deerfield Academy, 120, oh, do you want to second that first or? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Deerfield Academy, $120,400. Eagle Brook School, $26,000. Bement School, $18,600. And Historic Deerfield, $14,000. Is there second. a second? Mr. McDaniel? I'm just so grateful for all the, the, the gifts and the, the work that um, other nonprofits do in our community to, to support our town. So we thank them very much for this. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. McDaniel? I move the town acknowledge the following monetary pledges towards the cost of replacement of the Deerfield Elementary School roof, which has been completed in the summer of 2016. These pledges are to be paid over a period of five or 10 years for the total amounts listed. Deerfield Academy, $105,000. Eagle Brook School, $75,000. Historic Deerfield, $25,000. Bement School, $20,000. Pledges received during the last 12 months are Deerfield Academy, $10,500. Eagle Brook, uh, $7,500. Historic Deerfield, $5,000, and Bement School, $2,000. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Mr. McDaniel. I move the town acknowledge the following monetary donations made during the last 12 months towards the school resource officer program. Deerfield Academy, $30,000. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. McDaniel. I move the town acknowledge the following monetary donations made during the last 12 months towards the Obelisk Community Preservation Project. Deerfield Academy, $9,360. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. McDaniel. I move the town acknowledge the gifts made by Deerfield Academy during the last 12 months of the Emergency Medical Services Building to the town of Deerfield to be used to house the South County Emergency Medical Services. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 4, Mr. Camosa. I move the town transfer the interest of $1,664 earned for the preceding year from the Dickinson Library Trust Fund as follows. $1,414 to the Tilton Library for library use and $250 to the Frontier Regional School for library use. Mr. Kamos, any brief comment? Uh, no, these are just moving the interest from the trust funds to the appropriate departments. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 5, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to fix the maximum amount that may be spent during fiscal year 2020 beginning July 1st, 2019 for the revolving funds established in section 20-3 of the Town of Deerfield General Bylaws for the certain departments, boards, committees, agencies, or officers in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half. Second. This is, this is just uh, basically a housekeeping article that we do every year to um, make sure that um, the money doesn't build up too high. Any questions? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Article 6, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town adopt the following FY 2020 classification and compensation plan in accordance with uh, section 35 through 37 of the general bylaws of the town of Deerfield. The plan is included in your handout. Mr. McDaniel. This is a, a classification and compensation schedule that, um, that we use to, to pay our employees throughout, uh, throughout the town and depending on what steps they're on and how many years of service. Um, each year we decide whether there'll be a um, step increase and, a, and or a, a COLA. Uh, which is a cost of living adjustment. Any questions on that? Just be, yes, yes. Just wait for the mic. Um, I just want to add, uh, typically we would ask the finance committee to uh, give their recommendation on, on all of these articles. Their recommendations where they do have one has been noted in the packet, so we're not doing that this evening unless there is something in particular they wish to speak on. So. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bruce Hunter, um, a member of the Personnel Committee and also a representative from the Finance Committee to the Personnel Committee. Michelle Camosa, Chair of the Personnel Board. Um, as, part of our, uh, the by, excuse me, as part of the bylaws of the Town of Deerfield for the Personnel Committee, we're to report our recommendation to the town meeting of what we made on the compensation personnel uh, classification schedule. We made a recommendation of uh, three in three areas. Uh, vote was five, five zero zero to recommend to the selectmen the following increases. Increase in step one to thirteen fifty, which would bring um, the first grade and step to the current minimum wage um, as it would be in two thousand twenty one. Our second recommendation was to provide a 2% COLA to any employee that was at step 10 and was unable to receive an additional step. Our third, rep our third recommendation to the selectmen was to increase all personnel in the town uh, a one-step increase which averaged anywhere from 3.85% to 5.65% increase uh, for the town employees. This recommendation was made on December um, of 2018 to the select board and the classification schedule as represented tonight is not what we recommended. So did the personnel committee take a vote on the uh the schedule as recommended. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, we did not. We uh, made no recommendation on the schedule. We Thank made a recommendation of the schedule, our recommendation to the select board. That was our task. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussions? Yes. Just one moment on the mic. Mark Gilmore. Mark Gilmore, Town of Deerfield. Uh, to give my address. Just the street, it'd be great. Yeah, South Millbury Road. Um, if I understand correctly, you made a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, and this was not what you recommended? And was there any discussion between your board and their board as to why the recommendations were not um, followed? Yes, we made a presentation to the Board of Selectmen uh, relative to our recommendations. We felt that they were fair and equitable um, relative to town personnel receiving a 3 to 5% raise. And there was no need to provide an additional 2% COLA. The COLA, we felt, was built into the classification which was adopted and revised in 2018. Um, thank you and that was my recollection that I remember here and I just wanted to make sure it was reinforced that it was there it just 
Sure. Thank you again for the work you do as a personnel board. Uh, with no motion to amend, are there any questions or discussion? Yes. Hi, really Dwight, South Mill River Road. So my question to the select board is, why didn't you take their recommendation? You want me to speak to that? Mr. Yes, Mr. McDaniel. Okay. Um, so we had a vote, uh, I think it was two to one, if I, if I, if I have that recollection correct. Um, I've, I've thought about compensation for a lot over the last couple of years. And um, the way um, I think my philosophy has evolved is that um, we have a compensation schedule and we, every you know, several years, every five years or so, we go out and do a study and kind of put it where, where we think it needs to be in relationship to um, other towns and to be competitive. Um, my concern with the recommendation was that it was, was uh, only giving a, it was uh, actually creating another step because you were only giving um, a cost of living adjustment to the, to the top, uh, to the top 10 step and you weren't giving it to the rest of the employees. Um, I view this compensation schedule as um, when somebody um, is doing the job proficiently uh, at step 10, that's what we feel that position should pay. And, and usually it takes people about seven to 10 years, depending on where they get started on their schedule to become really proficient in their job. And um, so we, we feel like if, if we think step 10 is, is, uh, is a proficient, pay, uh, the steps leading up to that are just kind of getting that person to, to where we think they need to be. Um, I think if we're going to do a cost of living adjustment, it should be across the board so your whole compensation plan stays intact because what happens if it starts stretching apart, we, we wind up where we were over the last couple of years where we had a compensation plan that wasn't keeping up with, with the marketplace. So we, um, I felt that our employees deserved the compensation uh, a, a COLA, a step across the board. If I'm going to give it to step 10, I'm going to give it to everybody. Um, and I think the steps are just kind of what people, what, where people are in their process to step 10 where we feel like that position should pay. So, um, so I disagreed with the, with, with the way it went. Um, and I just felt our employees deserve the, the cost of living because I feel like the cost of living was about a little over 2% this year. Next year could be different. Um, it all depends on the economy, and we look at it every year. Steps, um, I've come to kind of believe that they are kind of built into the job description of what it is, where people get hired at a lower rate and work their way up year after year. Um, we, we're not set up in this community to do evaluations and, and, and to do, um, to adjust people's pay on specific evaluations, which you could do in the private sector, but everything is public for our employees, so it's really hard to kind of do a, to tell, to, to, to put somebody's pay on their job performance. Um, I hope that explained my position. Mr. Upton? Yes, uh, I've been following this also, and two years ago uh, at annual town meeting, it was voted, uh, salary schedule, new salary schedule was voted to catch up the town employees. And to catch up, I at that time I even asked, well, where are the numbers? What are we using for a base uh, as far as the catch-up? And those were hard to come by, to be honest with you. Uh, so anyways, it was voted, recommended in, for the catch-up. Last year at annual town meeting, the salary schedule provided a 5 to 7 percent, roughly 5 to 7 percent increase to the town employees. And that was voted and approved. Now this year, here again, we are with this salary schedule, and if, if we're concerned about the people at the top step, then I think we need to go back and look at the structure of the salary schedule and, and think about either adding a step on that 10th year or whatever the case may be, instead of doing simply a, a step increase, plus a 2% across the board. At some point in time, you know, I would love to be getting a 5 to 7% increase. And I'm not saying, you know, we have good town employees. I'm not saying that they don't deserve increases because they do. But at the same time, how long can we continue to give 5 to 7% increases? 
on an annual basis and technically with no review. So that's just where I stand. Mr. Kamosa, did you have a comment? Or? I agree with Jeff. I don't be short and sweet. Uh, Mr. Gilmore. When this uh, compensation plan was originally designed, it was designed to do uh, performance appraisals so that basically people were getting paid for the job they did. <clears throat> the town of Deerfield um, never was able to make that work, um, whether we didn't get the right help or we, did, we fought it from the top or we fought it from the bottom or whatever we did, we couldn't get what a lot of towns gets done now, which is evaluates the performance of the work that you're getting in the town. And we fought, when I was on the Board of Selectmen, many years to try to get a system that would work to evaluate the performance of the employees. And that starts with all the department heads and everybody else. I would like to, and I hope I remember at the end of the meeting, charge you with going back to look at um, those different systems because basically we had three good systems and for one reason or another they all got put into a round can and never instituted. They had plenty of training, they had plenty of opportunity to make it work. We just didn't give it a chance to work. So I think it'd be time for us to follow what Jeff is saying is let's figure out whether we're doing the right thing by our employees because it's not good to have it somebody working side by side with somebody who's getting the same pay and doing half the work. So, Some more questions on the aisle? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I don't necessarily have a question. My name is Kim Russo. I'm, I live over on Captain Lathrop Drive. I am a member of the, of the personnel board. I am an HR professional for 30 years. Um, our recommendation was meant to be a prudent recommendation for this town. Um, generally, the steps that are, as Bruce mentioned, range anywhere between 3 and 5%. The general marketplace right now is giving a 3% increase for employees across the board. You know, and you take that 3% and you split it up. Some people get 2, some people get 4, depending on performance, Mark. So that's what those steps really are meant to be, is paying for a, a, a you know, annual increase. Um, the 2% COLA, I understand what you guys did two years ago. I think that was a great idea for you guys to try to align the compensation plan because I think for years it hadn't been adjusted. And typically what happens are companies and organizations will adjust their comp um, and move, the, move it so that uh, to be aligned with, um, you know, with the cost of living. But I, you know, I stand by and support what the personnel board did. I think that... Um, three percent, or you know, two to three percent, is generally a good increase right now. We already did what we could to to um, help the town a couple of years ago. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Cavaco of North Hillside Road. Um, I went to the personal pers the board meeting that um, had this, and one of the things that I'm not hearing in the discussion was. Um, the fairness or equity between um, school teachers and the rest of the um, town employees. And um, I'm not invested whichever way it goes, even as a town employee. Um, but I did want to point out that the union employees get the STEP and the COLA. And so there was discussion of how come the town staff doesn't get that. And um, if we were unionized, would that make it different. So I just want to say that that was one of the points is that it was to bring it up to the same standards that the school teachers get. Mr. Upton. Yeah, I'd just like to quickly respond to that. And, and I understand and I appreciate those comments because it is, you know, it's uh, trying to compare apples to oranges in a way. I'd, I'd like to remind people that usually when there's a union involved, there's usually negotiations involved with contracts. There's usually union dues that those members pay. And there's also, uh, lost my train of thought here. Uh, yeah, there's usually an evaluation involved also with that. 
And don't get me wrong, evaluations, I hope people understand, evaluations can work well for the town too, and, or whatever uh, the case may be, because evaluations can point out what people are doing well also. It doesn't have to be a negative evalu evaluation. It can be a very positive, reassuring evaluation and gets people heading in the right direction, nice pat on the back saying, hey, you did a great job, here it is, here's the proof. So please don't think that evaluations are just uh, in, in a negative format. They do not have to be. So just a quick response to that. And I know it is difficult, apples and oranges here. Mr. McDaniel. So I agree, uh, evaluations are a great idea. I'd love to see that instituted over the next year or so. Um, I, I do think um, it's worthy, it's important to the employees to feel like they're doing a good job. I know no one who works half as good as the person next to them. I've been so impressed with the dedication and the hard work of our employees that, that bring services to you all. Um, just, just being in the private sector and then working around these employees for the last three years has just been eye-opening it how hard they work, how dedicated they are, how frugal they are about trying to save you money and, and be efficient in their job. Um, I wanted to bring parity between our school teachers and the people that are running our trucks and shoveling ditches and doing stuff in the yard. They, they don't have the ability to do, uh, they don't have a union, thank goodness. Um, they, they rely on us to come and support them as well as we support our teachers in education and that's what I did. And our police officers. And our police officers. Any other questions? Yes. <clears throat> Janet Ward to be Tyler Way. I don't know too much about this process, but um, usually people who wa um, work under a contract are in a, in a position for three years. I don't know of too many companies that give their employees a raise each year. And I also want to ask a question with this increase of pay raise, does it affect the insurances that we pay on the town and the retirement? Yes, it would. Yes. Mr. Camosa stated it would. It doesn't affect the insurance, just the retirement. The retirement. Council has stated it would just affect the retirement. I just, Eric Brown, Main Street. Uh, just one quick question. So from what I hear, and, and then I, I forgive me, the woman in the pink, I didn't remember her name, but from the personnel board, but what she was stating was that your taxpayers, the private industry, we'll call it, it got a 2 to 3% increase. We're looking to give anywhere from a 5 to 8% increase you know, from, from the tax base to pay that. Was there any consideration to down the road if we continue to give an 8% increase in salaries and we're only getting a three, two to three percent increase. Was, was that a thought process when you guys were looking at that, how, to, how this was going to sustain itself down the road? No, uh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Ms. McCann. Uh No, uh, I think the, the thing that I had to get, kind of get my head around is that we, we value that position at a step 10. That's what we think that, that position should be paid if they're doing a good job and they're proficient in their work. However they get there or however long it takes to get there, um, that's what it takes to get there. But the person getting paid, you know, at steps two or step ten are still doing the same job. It's just a matter of proficiency and how long they've been here. Um, the five percent is really not the issue. It's, it's, the, it's the step ten is what you're paying people to do that job. And then if you're giving a 2% COLA, you want to give it across the board because you can't just give it to the top people. You have to treat this this compensation schedule evenly or else in four or five years it gets all out of whack. So, I mean, we could give 1%. That's, you know, that's a possibility in a year. Or we could give nothing. Or nothing. Uh, and if we're in a really tough spot, we give nothing in a step, in no step. But this year, you know, we felt uh, we could do that and keep it in... in um, in coordination to the, you know, the larger group of our workforce, which is our schools and our police. So we wanted parity. Did personnel have any further comment, or you had raised your hand at one point? Are you? Uh, just wait for a mic. No, we're fine. Okay, thank you. Yes. I just. <clears throat> you 
the mic, Skip. Use the mic, introduce yourself, your street address. Thank you. Right there, Skip. Skip Olmstead, Finance Committee. Uh, I just want to take a couple of seconds here to look at the teacher contract for the current year, 2009, FY 2019. Starting salary at the bachelor's degree is 43,000, a little less than 44, actually. Top salary is 66. That's approximately a 50% increase from, from the lowest step to the top step at the bachelor's level. At the master's level, it's 46,000, let me put my glasses down so I can see, 46,500 to 70,900. That's slightly more than 50%. At the master's plus 45, or certificate of advanced graduate study, it's 51,000 to 77,000. Again, approximately a 50% increase from the lowest step to the top step. If you look at the salary schedule before you, with the exception of a penny, from the bottom step, step one, to step 10, is a 50% is increase, almost exactly. Uh, the, in, in FY19, the gear that we're in now, the teachers received a 2.5% COLA. In FY18, they received a 2.5% COLA. In FY17, they received a 1% COLA, i.e., they averaged a 2% COLA. The reason that I'm not giving you salaries for next year is that they are in negotiations or have just completed negotiations, I'm not sure which, but we don't have them yet. So all we did with the salary schedule here was to take the FY19, the current schedule, we added 2% to everything across the board. I doubt seriously that the teachers are getting any less than that for next year, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, there was a split on the Finance Committee. There were two or three people who were opposed to the, this increase, and I think four of us who were in favor of it. Any other questions or discussion? Yes, ma'am. Just one quick comment. If you could just stand, ma'am, and state your name and your street address. One moment. Kate Lawless, um, Sugarloaf Street. Um, can you tell me what the reasoning was behind the te step 10 getting an increase and no one else? What was the reason? Mr. Hunter. Um, step 10 uh, is the maximum step that any employee can have. So all the employees that are in the step system are one through 10. So we've, last year the select board gave the people that were at step 10 a 2% increase to keep up with inflation. So that would, that allowed anybody that was at the highest step to have a minimal raise of 2%. So we felt that that was something that we felt was fair and equitable to the mostly department heads. And um, that was our reasoning behind giving the 2% to anybody that was at step 10 or higher. Mr. Upton, did you have a comment or? Yeah, very quickly, I just I want people to understand, hopefully, that this is not about the town employees and whether they're doing a good job or not. The town employees, for the most part, I really believe, and I have to agree uh, with Trevor, they do a good job, they work hard. Uh, it comes down to, though, what is reasonable, what is not. And as I said before, we tried to catch them up two years ago, a 5 to 7 percent last year, and here we are again. Is that sustainable? You know, uh, who knows? Are we, are we talking huge money here? Probably not huge, but at the same time, are we going to be doing this 5 to 7% year after year? 
on an annual basis? Is it going to become expected? And uh, that's that's part of my concern. So that's all. Yes, Mr. Russo. Matt Russo, Captain Lathrop Drive. Um, I guess a question for the school, being you brought it up, Skip. They're evaluated. Do the teachers get that step increase every year, regardless of their evaluation? Or are those held back if there's a poor evaluation? We've got the superintendent here. Let the superintendent answer that question. Mr. Olmster, we'll, we'll... Okay. Mr. Superintendent or whoever can answer it. Mr. Modesto, would you like to speak? Sure. Um, no, they are not denied the next step if they have a poor evaluation. However, the evaluation process moves forward, um, puts them in a probationary period, and whether or not they continue after that probationary period to meet the, the uh, demands of that probationary period. But they do move on to the next step. Thank you. Okay, so regardless of what happens, they're going to get a step, plus they're going to get COLA. I understand the parity and trying to keep town employees at parity with the schools. You know, we're in a community where we look at about 70% of our taxes going to schools. If we're going to fix it at the town level, we need to fix it at the school level as well. And at some point here, we've got to take a stand. I'm looking at a capital improvement sheet here that's got a whole lot of money on it. And these are things that the town needs. I know some of you aren't on sewer. I know it's a sore subject. But it's a big project that's got to happen, and it's not going to be cheap. And if people want sidewalks. There's a whole bunch of things that we want in this town. We need to start making some hard choices about where that's going to come from. If we've got a personnel committee, we should employ that committee. We should ask them to go and do the homework and not just look at the town. They should be looking at all the employees in town whether they're town employees, school employees, police, whatever it may be. We need a, a plan to cover the whole gamut. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Move the question. Uh, with no other questions or comments, we are going to call the vote. So uh, all those in favor of the motion as presented by Mr. McDaniel? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The simple majority and the motion carries. Article 7, Mr. Camosa. I move the town vote pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 150E, Section 7, to appropriate the sum of $8,677 to fund the collective bargaining agreement for fiscal year 2020 with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, AFL, CIO, as contained within the omnibus a budget of the town. Second. Mr. Camosa, briefly. This is uh, from the law. We have to fund the first year of the collective, uh, the new contract. It's a three-year contract, and this only funds the um, increase of the 2% raise that they're going to receive. And the step. Any questions? Step. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously, or er, carries. Article 8. Uh, who's presenting this? Sorry, there, it was up in the air who was presenting it. The omnibus budget? Uh, I can do that. Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. Is that all right? I'm sorry? Do yes. you want me to? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I move the moderator read the amounts recommended by the Finance Committee to be appropriated under this article, and unless objection is made, each item recommended in the report of the Finance Committee shall be tentatively accepted as appropriated for the purpose stated. If an objection is made to any recommendation, such appropriation shall be taken separately, and the amount thereof and in the manner of taking the same shall be determined by the vote of the meeting and tentatively accepted. One vote shall be taken appropriating each amount so accepted as a single appropriation not to be exceeded. Um, so this is how we handle the budget every year. I'm going to, uh, starting on page 11 in the handout, I'm going to go item by item. If there's any item that you'd like to come back to, uh, if you could clearly state hold, we'll go through the entire list and then come back to the holds. So if there aren't any holds, those items will not be discussed after we go through the list. So with that, I will be going down the recommended column. Moderator, $400. Select board salaries, $16,000.
Select board staff salaries, $199,842. Select board administrator, $11,150. Finance committee, $500. Accountant salary, $49,905. Accountant expense, $15,800. Assessor salaries, $11,000. Assessor's administrative assistant, $60,000. $870. Assessor's expense, $24,335. Assessor's uh, quinquennial re recertification, $22,500. Clerk treasurer collector salaries, $171,683. Treasurer collector expense, $29,000. Legal expense, $51,000. Personnel board, $500. IT hardware, $6,000. PEG access capital expense, $4,000. Contracted services, $211,200. Town clerk expense, $24,734. Conservation commission, $800. Open space committee, $250. Planning board, $1,000. There's a hold on planning board. Zoning board of appeals, $1,000. Agricultural commission, $100. Energy committee, $1,000. Town office building maintenance, $89,400. Town office expense, $23,000. General insurance, $61,000. Police payroll, $849,372. Police department expense, $99,600. Police department capital, $52,500. Inspections department payroll, $147,730. Inspections Department expense, $4,600. Emergency Management, $2,800. Canine Control, $18,812. Deerfield Elementary School, $4,833,922. Frontier Regional School, $3,812,413. Frontier Regional Transportation, $162,251. We have a hold on Frontier Regional Transportation. Franklin Technical School Assessment, $275,794. Franklin Technical School Capital, $20,982. General Highway Payroll, $492,192. General Highway Expense, $241,650. Winter Snow and Ice Removal, $90,000. Street Lighting, so hold on, snow and ice. Street lighting, $37,000. Transfer station expense, $184,100. Test well monitoring maintenance, $50,000. Board of health salary, $37,475. Board of health expense, $39,493. Council on aging, $100. Senior center expense, $38,416. Veterans District Assessment, $10,438. Veterans Benefits, $25,000. ADA Coordinator, $250. The Tilton Library, $186,686. The Summer Swim Program, $6,310. Tritown Beach Expense, $17,321. Recreation Department Director's Salary, $49,712. Historical Commission, $1,175. Veterans Day Memorial Day Expense, $2,000. Maturing Debt, $345,000. Interest on Maturing Debt, $133,130. Interest on Temporary Loans, $5,000. The FERCOG Core Assessment, $43,546. Unfunded sick leave and vacation, $10,000. Franklin County Regional Retirement, $487,774. Workers' Compensation, $55,152. We have a hold on Workers' Comp. Unemployment Insurance, $17,000. Group Insurance, Town, dollars $289,200. Group insurance, school, $697,967. Medicare insurance, $102,707. Uh, 
Uh, back to page 12, someone had placed a hold on the Frontier Regional Transportation. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. McDaniel? Um, uh, I might want to uh, have uh, Mr. Modesto speak to this, but I believe, um, well, I, I believe they just completed a new contract, and I'm not sure why the reallocation. Um, Mr. Modesto? Sorry, I didn't say good evening last time I spoke, but good evening. Um, yeah, so we are, we just negotiated a new five-year contract for transportation. And um, what we did, or what the bidder did, uh, Group Code Transportation, um, put all the increases on the frontier budget. So it was actually a reduction of $35,000 to the Deerfield Elementary budget for transportation. And all of the um, increases went to the regionalization, uh, regional contract. And the idea behind that, um, and why we agreed to it, is that the regional school gets reimbursed for transportation. Um, right now it's sitting in the legislature at 80%. So the idea that we will get a lot of this money back is why that is why uh, it was stacked that way. Um, it was a competitive bid um, compared to the uh, group up north that went in together for a bid. We saved over, um, over $50 a day in comparison. So um, we did very well with it. Thank you. Mr. Russo, does that satisfy your hold? Thank you. And I do apologize, we need to go back to 11. Uh, the first hold was actually on uh, select board staff salaries. Uh, Bruce Hunter, San Gully Road, South Deerfield. Um, I believe that there is currently two staff people in the office, in the select board's office. Could, I'd like to have the, uh, the the town understand what our plans are to have that department fully staffed and how we plan to spend almost two hundred thousand dollars in employee benefits, employee I'm happy, happy salaries. To that. Mr. McDaniel. So yes, we we have been in running on a skeleton crew. I think ever since I got elected, um, we've gone through two town administrators. Um, we're working right now with an interim town administrator, um, not under contract. Um, we're down a uh, town administrator, assi assistant town administrator. So we have searches going on right now for a full-time town administrator and a full-time um, assistant town administrator, along with our full-time uh, full clerk who does a lot of you know, uh, payroll um, billings and stuff for the highway department. She does a lot of other things as well. That position does a lot of other things as well as um, support our office. So uh, I think for the first time in four years, I'll be really thrilled to have a full staff and be able to address a lot of the issues that we haven't been able to address over the years. So um, we've every year we've been turning back a bunch of money because it's just hard to, f to fill that position. It's a tough office with a lot coming in from multiple directions, from the planning department, from zoning, from um, you know, inspections department, you, you name it, every part of town comes through that office and um, it's been very difficult running on a skeleton crew. So our plan is to fill that out pretty well this year. So um, if we wind up with extra money, it'll roll back into the general fund. I hope, I hope that we, we can get a good contract um, for a good full term, you know, town administrator. Mr. Hunter. Um, thank you very much. I think it was beneficial for the townspeople to yes. hear why we have under, why we're understaffed and what the total expense might be. Yep. Thank you. Remove your hold. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a hold. We had a hold on the planning board. Thousand dollars. Thank you, Amy Gazen Schwartz, Evans Lane. Um, Back in the 1990s, the planning board had a very part-time, maybe even casual employee clerk or secretary who kept the minutes, was in charge of sending out um, notices of public hearings, organizing all the planning board paperwork and posting meetings. It doesn't look like this um, budget item includes that kind of a person. And it seems to me that the planning board is faced with a lot of really kind of complicated uh, tasks 
in the past year and in this upcoming year, it's only, their business is only getting more involved. It seems like they could use some extra help just in keeping the paperwork flowing. I know this position existed in the past because I did it for two or three years as a grad student. So, so I guess my first question is why is that not included in the budget and then I might think about making an amendment to include it. Thank you. Is Mr. Waite present or? Yes. Uh, Mr. Camosa. Yes, I'm also a member of the planning board. Uh, for several years we've been trying to get an, an, an individual to not only take our minutes for us, but also to do all of the things that you mentioned. Uh, we've, I've made several requests to the Finance Committee, and um, it, we've been turned down several times. Uh, I think it's important for our town to have that person. We currently run um, that entire office on one semi-retired person that works 20 hours a week, and she's totally overwhelmed. We do need that. Uh, excuse me, just to follow up, I believe the person that you're speaking uh, to is going to be hired in the select board office uh, as the assistant town administrator, and part of their duties is planning uh, for the town, and that will be a, the person that will coordinate all the efforts with the planning board and the select board. Mr. McDaniel. Uh, that, that's partially accurate. Yes, I mean, th that's, that's the goal is to kind of have somebody in our office um, to start coordinating part of that, hence the 200000 in our office. I'm hoping that we can get somebody to do that and uh, balance between the town administrator's job and, and the planning. Um, we were really hoping for an additional person to do strictly focus on planning because there's so much that goes on in our town that opportunities that we miss some business wants to come through that office and, you know, our, our office is short-staffed or busy and, and, you know, our building inspector is out and, you know, it's a part-time position in there. We miss those opportunities. So we do think it's valuable and I think we'll probably try to uh, keep pushing that issue to try and get somebody in there to kind of coordinate economic development, planning. There's a lot going on in town and we'd love that person to do that. But Bruce, Bruce is right. We hope to do those two positions and that's what's in the budget this year. So you're hoping to hire that person soon? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, searches are out. Things are in. Yeah. Yes, I believe the uh, assistant town administrator, 75% of their role <laughs> is planning. Yeah, we hope so. In economic development. We're, there's still a need for another. <laughs> there's a lot in that office going on, but yeah. So, but, but Bruce is right. We're moving that way. So great okay, question. I'll, I'll, withdraw, I'll withdraw my hold, but next year I'm going to come back and make sure that there's somebody helping the planning board. Well, if, if you want a job. But <laughs> I want a job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so jumping forward to winter snow and ice removal. We had a hold on work, workman's comp. Kathy Melnick, Mill Village Road. Um, just a question. I'm familiar with workers' comp. I'm assuming an audit is done. If you're giving these kind of raises, why isn't there more of an increase and it's a de decrease in salaries? Just a question. Yes, of course. I can answer that. Uh, so you wear, go ahead, Carolyn. Is that okay, Dan? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it's not based, workers' compensation is based on the occupational position, that, and most of our town employees are teachers or clerical, and so the numbers are pretty set, and it's just an estimate at the end of the year. They give us a real bill. And it's also based on the factor of losses. And for quite a while, we had um, seemingly a lot of accidents at the elementary school kitchen. But we since had safety um, classes, and we go as many times as we can um, to get credits on our insurance. And Kevin does OSHA training that gives us credits. So ultimately, at the end, our bill is fairly stable. 
and is actually decreasing on in general. Any other questions or comments? Those were the holds, and there were no amendments, so we should be able to move to the final motion. Ms. Ness, would you like to make that motion? Yes. <laughs> I move that the town appropriate $15,064,539 to fund the accepted amounts voted and to meet this appropriation transfer 100,000 from the overlay surplus, 73,253 from the South County Emergency Medical Service Enterprise Fund, $4,092 from the South County Senior Center Operation Fund, 29,200 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, 7,330 from the receipts reserved for the debt payment zero from free cash, and we raise an appropriate a balance of $14,850,664. Any questions or discussion? All right, with that, all those in, yes, Mr. Gilmore. You can just wait for the microphone, I appreciate it. Do we know what the projected free cash is? No. <laughs> depends, depends on the rest I'm of the meeting. I'm not going to say anything more. It Have a good day. Depends on the rest of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of questions over here. Yes, ma'am. My question, uh, Fran York, uh, why are you taking $4,092 from the senior center? We're already underfunded and have problems meeting our... That's from um, Sunderland and Waitley. That's Sunderland and Waitley's... Share. Oh, it's the, oh, I'm sorry. It's the indirect cost. So we, we oh. get costs for running... We get um, money for running enterprise funds um, because we're a three-town operation. So um, like the South County EMS and the, the senior center, we collect from Waitley and um, Sunderland to do the operation. So it covers some of the expenses of the town it's called indirect cost and that's what those are so not taking from it but adding to our budget for it mr hunter as a follow as a follow-up to your to your question uh, each of the two other towns pay the same fee or uh, proportional so, so. any other questions or discussion all those in favor of the budget as presented Aye. Aye. Opposed? Budget carries unanimously. Article 9, Mr. Camosa. I move that the town vote to appropriate $850,631 to fund the sewer enterprise fund for the fiscal year 2020 as followed. On the revenue side, the user's fees is 845000 Investment income of $5,631 total revenues of 850,631,000. The expenses, salaries and wages of $282,506, operating expenses of $538,925, the indirect costs of $29,200 for a total fund expense of $850,631. Second. Mr. Camoso, would you like to briefly explain? Well, this, this represents the amount of money that's collected from the user fees and uh, also shows where the money goes through the expenses and operation costs for that to run the system. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Rene Clancy, uh, Meadowood Drive. What's... Uh user fees. I mean, what I'm concerned about is raising our taxes of people that don't, are not connected to the sewer, but, who but, have septic systems. Will we be taxed? This, Mr. Kamalza? The, the user fees now are currently only for people who use the sewer, and it's calculated on a fixed fee uh, plus uh, a percentage of what your water bill is. So there's two fees, a, a fixed fee just for having the connection, and then you also get charged 
uh, a sewer fee for how much water goes through okay. the system. So there's no... It has nothing to do with people with, with septic. septic. Thank Not you. This That's okay. Not this one. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, good follow-up. Um, you say it's coming. Is the $845,000 the projected revenue from user fees for FY20? Or will it be an increase in user fees? I think that was from last year, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was the rates we had just yeah, we had just from done. the rates that we just adjusted. So they will increase this year. Uh, they may this user, at, the next, at the next meeting. They may, depending on how. Users' fee may differ correct, from this correct. number. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article ten, uh, Miss Shores Ness. I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of $1,388,936 and transfer from free cash the sum of $327,576 to fund the South County Emergency Medical Service Enterprise Fund for the fiscal year 2020 and to meet the town of Deerfield's allocated share of the costs as follows. Medical service fees. 525,000. Grants, zero. Retained earnings, $231,077. Deerfield's assessment from free cash, $327,576. Sunderland's assessment, $199,203. Waitley's assessment, $106,080. Total revenues, $1,388,936. Expenses, expenses is salaries and wages of $1,004,733. Operating expenses, $210,950. Indirect costs, $73,253. Reserve for emergencies and unseen, um, a retained amount, 100000 Total enterprise fund expenses of $1,388,936. Again, Deerfield's share is, from free cash is $327,576. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. Um, this is our operating budget for the South County EMS. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 11, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $38,067 to the other post employment benefits liability trust fund, which is OPEB. Second. Second. Briefly, Mr. McDaniel. So this, uh, this article is, um, you were fortunate enough to to uh, allow us last year to start an OPEB fund or an other post-retirement benefits fund. Um, and we, we came up with a formula to put a certain amount of money each year aside to start um, a dealing with the very large um, liabilities that we'll have in the future. And this is just a kind of just getting started, but um, I appreciate you continuing to support this uh, looking to the future. And Mr. McDaniel, can you just briefly describe what OPEB is? Yes, OPEB is... Um, is uh, when our employees retire, um, there'll be other um, benefits that we'll have to pay as they continue on in, 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 uh, in life. And this is um, each year we spend a certain amount of money that goes towards uh, health insurance um, benefits for our retirees. And um, that, that delta is growing every year, what we, what we pay and what we're going to be paying. Um, and then pretty soon we won't be able to afford to pay it. So this is kind of setting aside money to start closing that delta and start closing that gap in the outer years. Um, it's, it's insufficient, woefully insufficient right now, but there's not a big pot of money. So hopefully eventually um, when we get our pensions paid up, we hope to start steering money that way or if there's any other um, you know, revenues that come into the town that are kind of one-time revenues, I, I would like to see us you know, come to you and support putting some of that funds in there. Um, in the future to, try to start to build up that fund as we've done with their pensions. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion? Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Was there a question? I, 
just want to know who, who, who controls that um, fund. Is it strictly the town that has a, a reserve of that? So it, le it is for town employees. Correct, correct. Thank you. Yep, thank yes. you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 12, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town transfer from free cash the sum of $186,300 transfer from the Roadside Mower Special Revenue Fund, the sum of $26,000, and transfer from the SCEMS Enterprise Fund retained earnings, the sum of $243,000, for a total sum of $455,300 for the purpose of funding the following capital projects. The elementary school um, hardware, 12,500. Elementary school flooring, 18,000. Elementary restroom uh, renovations, 15,300. Elementary school um, gym floor renovations, 15,500. The police radios, 45,000. Highway Ford um, 350 pickup with a nine foot plow, $40,000. In the town common complete streets um, grant program, forty thousand dollars for a total of one hundred eighty-six thousand three hundred. The roadside mower fund is twenty-six thousand. That's a pass-through, and the SCEMS retained earnings for the ambulance replacement is from SCEMS um, retained earnings for a total of four hundred fifty-five thousand three hundred. Second, Ms. Shores Ness, would you like to briefly explain? This is the capital project um, list that the Capital Improvement um, Planning Committee put together after hearing all the requests. This is what we are supporting and recommending. And you'll see that the Capital Improvement Committee and the Finance Committee both recommend the numbers as presented. Any questions? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can, can one of the uh, selectmen discuss town, town common complete streets program? Yes, um, I'd be happy to. Yes, thank you. So there's a town common uh, ad hoc committee that has been meeting for the last um, two or three years. Um, it was started by the late uh, Jane Treger, who I'd like to just say I miss tremendously. Um, <laughs> She was a, uh, just a wonderful person and the first uh, person to stand up and ask for a mic, even if she supported something. Um, she was just wonderful. So uh, she, she began to, um, and, and a group of us began looking at the town common of trying to improve the crosswalks and the benches there, which are really in need of, of replacement and upgrade. Um, as we've been studying this and going around and around for three years, two, three years on this, um, the biggest problem we're running into is uh, where the crosswalks lead right now do not, um, or the crosswalks in the common do not really lead to um, safe crosswalks on the road. Um, so we're, we're also instituting a complete street study and a grant right now to start doing our, um, well, we'll do a pr prioritization plan, and that could be the other end of town. It just depends on what you all come out for and support for um, for doing in the town. I hope that the town common area and the sidewalks in downtown would be a, a major part of that project. So um, this money, which um, I had requested about um, $75,000, and through the capital planning, they kind of felt of splitting that up, 40000 this year, 40000 next year, because we can only get about 400000 as a grant from Complete Streets. That's up to, and design is usually about 10% of that. So they felt 40,000 this year, 40,000 next year is where they would be. Um, the consultant we spoke with thought we'd need about 75,000 to get started, you know, to do the engineering work, but kind of talking with Bruce, who's done a lot of these projects in the past or has done projects in the past, and he, um, he kind of felt like these should be separate items, and I probably should have separated out the town common on its own, own page and the complete streets on another page, but they're so intertwined, and and, um, and then the state owns half the common, you know, the Sugarloaf Street and 
street, you know, um, with the town halls on. It's all very complicated. So this was just money kind of set aside to start this process of engineering and doing the complete streets work so we could figure out where the crosswalks would finally be and where to, where to fix them on the common. Um, I may come at another special town meeting or another town meeting to ask for a separate fund for actually implementing the work at, on the common. Uh, I just think it's really important if you come to the to the Memorial Day celebrations and, and just seniors and stuff trying to stand there and talk on these sidewalks that are so horrible, a lot like many in our town. Um, this is just our goal of mine. So I know that's long-winded, but... Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, I'm Max Antis. I'm from Stillwater Road. Why are we lumping all these items from the school, the police department, the highway department, the town common into one article? And why wouldn't we put the F-350 pickup in the highway department capital budget and the police radios in the police capital budget? And so we can look at, and also the ambulance, where we could look at revenue and capital in, in one place for one division as opposed to lumping it all into one article where you've got to vote for some things that you might not approve of. You know, can we cut out certain things, or are we going to have to forego the hardware on the grammar school? It's just, it seems an odd jumble of items in that, that article. Ms. Shores Ness? Uh, we have a capital improvement planning committee, so we solicit all requests for December 1st, and then we um, entertain um, each request um, and we interview the persons or department who is bringing that forward. And then we um, decide whether we support it or not and we recommend it. We have public hearings. We re recommend it to the select board and, and then it goes to town meeting. So the reason why um, we have a bylaw that requires that um, we have a capital planning committee and a capital planning process and the idea is to make sure that we are funding our capital projects because it's too easy not to fund capital projects. That's usually the first thing that goes um, in a budget when there's tough times. But from year to year to year, there's bumps in the capital budget because there's these big ticket items that come along. And what I'm saying is, why wouldn't we have a standard capital budget for the highway department and make the department head work within that budget each year? Mr. Upton? The capital bylaw requires that uh, all items over $10,000 and has a lifespan of more than five years comes under review to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. And that's, that's within your bylaw. So anything over uh, the $10,000 uh, figure other than uh, rehabilitation on a building, which is $25,000. So that, it's just your bylaw, that's what was voted in and that's what we have to adhere to. So items that are uh, lifespan of five years plus and $10,000 plus has to come to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for review. Also non-recurring. Right, um, non-recurring. Our police cruiser is, an, we consider an operational expense because we essentially use a cruiser up every year for the amount of mileage that is put on a cruiser. So that's why you don't see the cruiser okay. here. Mr. Camosa? Also, I, I do believe that you could amend any uh, dollar amount in there if you felt uh, necessary to talk about it. The, the point I was working towards is to get department heads to decide what they want versus what, you know, the wants versus needs question. They, May well, I they do. That's, that? They have to go before the... Right. Mr. Upton? Part, part, part of the problem with that is that uh, these items come up occasionally. They're not reoccurring. So that could have a huge impact on their budgets from year to year. So you could be looking at, say, the highway department, and all of a sudden you could be looking at a you know, 25 30% increase depend, uh, depending on their needs. Last year it was a two, I think, I think it was... 205,000 or 215,000 for uh, the dump plow truck. 
So that would have raised havoc on their uh, operating budget. And if you saw that increase at annual town meeting, you probably wouldn't want to be voting that. And that's why those items have, should come through a capital improvement plan. So it doesn't impact their operating budget from year to year by having it hitting those huge peaks and valleys. You're, you're trying for an, oper uh, an operating budget from year to year. You want to be able to keep that fairly consistent throughout. So those items, that's why your big ticket items go to a capital improvement uh, fund. And we also have, we also really wanted to have a five-year plan so you have an idea of what capital expenses are coming. So you solicit um, the department heads to make sure they put in any um, upcoming expenses that they foresee so that we have an idea of what our expenses are down the line. So we adopt a five-year plan as well. It's not, I mean, obviously it's just an estimate and it's, um, you know, a lot of things are pushed, uh, you know, a year or two down the line. But it gives us an idea of what is coming um, ahead. Mr. Antis, any? Nope. Thank you. Mr. Gilmore? The bigger cities and the bigger towns do exactly what he's recommending is the fact that each of the departments have a planning, capital planning process, and they'll do a five or ten year plan, and they'll give it to the Board of Selectmen, and they'll live within that plan, and they'll get X number of dollars every year to fill that plan. But our town's not big enough, nor is our department heads have a staff to be able to put that capital planning into their budget thought process. So when we go to uh, Boston every year, when you get to the next stages of our towns, they do do exactly what he's recommending, is that they put together a capital plan at the department level and they propose an amount of money and it's spent over a period of time so that it doesn't get the ups and downs, but we don't have the staff to put a plan together that way. So if hopefully that's helpful to you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, in the back. Uh, Kent Cutterback, Stage Road, also uh, Deerfield School Committee, but I serve as the Deerfield School Committee rep to the Capital Planning Committee. I think it's just important to note that in the past we never really had a centralized capital planning process in the town. The requests would come every year, we'd vote on them, but there was no coherent plan in place. The Capital Planning Committee was established to review, just as you're, you're talking about, to review the plans that are submitted by department heads. And as pointed out, we don't have the staff internally in our various departments to be able to efficiently manage it. This allows a committee of representatives from various parts of town uh, boards to review the requests and put together a plan, long-term plan ultimately, of hopefully five years that will be adjusted every year but it allows the department heads to submit and it allows the select board to see and the finance committee to see the um, planned expenses over the coming years. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Melnick. just have a question in concerning the um, town common and um, the street program. Mm -hmm. um, nothing will interfere with the town common or the sidewalks once they start rehabbing the sewer system. Nothing yeah. will nothing well, that, will harm that, right? That, that, well, hopefully not. That's why this design work would be done to see where everything lies, and we didn't want to go ahead and do anything in there without having that study done to figure out what's underground, what, what would we disturb if we did something like that. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to go and put new sidewalks in and then rip them up next year. Yeah, if we do thank it. you. Yeah, no, that's where we got that on radar for sure. Yes. John Reno, Kelleher Drive. I think that people have heard it before. Uh, my question, 
and that is, are we ever going to do anything with the Bloody Brook? There are some pretty big trees that have fallen across, and they're damming up the brook, and we know there's a lot of problems around that. Is there any money anywhere to alleviate that? Just briefly, we're, we're somewhat out of the scope here, so. Okay. Um, we um, have joined the Pioneer Valley Mosquito District, and we're hoping to be able to work in the Bloody Brook this year. Um, unfortunately, we've been trying to hire a supervisor, which would then um, allow our highway department to work under the supervisor. We just haven't found a qualified, or we have not been, as a commissioners, we have not been able to f find a supervisor we're comfortable with. But we're still posting, we're still interviewing, and we're hoping that we'll get something going pretty soon. The Bloody Brook is on our radar. A lot of hours, a lot of hours have been spent trying to solve that problem. I know it doesn't seem like anything's happened, but we're, it's part of the MVP program, our Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program now, and it's also on the radar for the mosquitoes. Any other questions on the motion that's before you? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 13, Mr. Camosa. I move the town transfer the sum of $13,500 from free cash for the buyout of the lease of the police department motorcycle. Second. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment, Mr. Camosa? Um, I'll let the chief talk to this one first. <laughs> Mr. Pachor, chief Pachor. Hi, good evening, everybody. I think most know me, John Pachork, the chief of police in Deerfield. When I first got here about seven years ago, when I first became chief of police, one of the things that the officers on the agency were looking for was advancement or area in which they could uh, do something else within the police department. They tormented me for about three to five years to get a motorcycle, and I locked my heels in hardcore. Year five, I gave in to them. I gave them a two-year opportunity on a two-year lease to see if the program would work out under certain parameters. The first time an officer fell off of it, it was leaving the town on a flatbed, and I would shred the lease. So we went through the whole program. I learned that in order to even sit on the motorcycle, they have to go to a week-long course. The three hardest courses in law enforcement is, number one, accident reconstruction because of the advanced mathematics associated with it. Number two is drug recognition expert. But number three, well known in the law enforcement field, is motorcycle school. Because the side of the bikes, when you send it to training, they duct tape and completely cover it with padding. Your goal, day one, is to lay that motorcycle down in excess of 20 times. They train them in five days how to ride through sand, ride up and down stairs, avoid accidents, be hyper-vigilant on that motorcycle. When they are done at the day's end, every single day for that five days, no exaggeration, you can check with any one of my people, they have to ice their arm from the clutch movement. They're taking Advil every night at the hotel. It is one of the hardest courses out there. So what I gave them was the two years as a trial period to see does the community like the program? Do they value a motorcycle once in a while on the road to turn heads? And as I stated to the select board two years ago, in Sturbridge, I was adamantly against the program. I didn't see the value in it initially. However, sitting in a Mark Cruiser on the side of the road, what I soon learned in Sturbridge, everybody approached the motorcycle cop. Didn't matter where they were parked. Kids, adults, anybody would walk up and start talking to them. And I went, oh my God, it works. So I turned back the clock to those days and said, I'll give it a two year opportunity. I took 3,300 out of police donations. I think 5,000, 5,200 out of police operational expenses over that two years to try the program, figure out for traffic enforcement and community policing wise, was it of value? So those motorcycles list for about 25 to 28,000. We've paid $8,800 on a lease. 
We own the lights on it. We own the radio on it. We can turn it in tomorrow. It's not a big deal. We can purchase the motorcycle outright for $13,500. By my quick numbers, those motorcycles are good for about 15 years. UMass just traded their bikes in after 15 years, and they were still getting four dollars to $7,000 on trade-in. So of the $13,500, when you look at the depreciation on that motorcycle over the next 13 years, it's minimal money. The annual operation cost, the insurance on it, is $461. The insurance co company quoted the same as a cruiser. So annual operation cost between an oil change and inspection sticker, um, insurance is about $1,100 a year. I guess my question to the townspeople is, do you consider it a valuable tool from either a traffic enforcement perspective, do you consider it a valuable tool as a community policing perspective? When I met with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, I specifically requested that they take no action. Don't recommend or, or not recommend it. I actually want to see the input from the townspeople as a whole. And I believe that word made its way back to the Finance Committee as well. So that's the, the basic of it. I'm more than happy to entertain any questions and field what I can. Owie Vandervelden, uh, 99 Hillside Road. I'm also on the Finance Committee. Um, I'm wondering, do you have any data on, like, costs of maintenance versus, for the motorcycle versus, do you save costs on the vehicles that you would be using otherwise, the cruisers? Do you have any data on that? And also, I have a question about the cost of the training and how many officers use it. So the training is free. There's no cost for it. We do have to put somebody at a hotel for the week. It's about $300 for the hotel room. We have to obviously pay for that officer to go. There's only four officers on the police department right now that are certified. And the other side of that is maintenance-wise, we're only putting four to 6,000 miles on that motorcycle a year. So I do anticipate we'll have to do brakes on it in another probably three to five years. But I don't see any large expenses coming for the next three to five years on it compared to a cruiser. One of the things the Finance con Committee immediately teased me about was, can't we swap a cruiser out for it? I don't think they We're only putting three to 4,000 miles on a year. We're not putting the 144 on when you take two officers on 24-7, 365. Question over here. Hi, I'm Mary Cloutier, 17 Sugarloaf Street. I'm wondering if you have any data on whether or not it makes our streets safer? or a community safer? I don't have any data on that. Yeah, there's, there's no statistics out there that I can throw at you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mr. Upton. Yes, uh, just to set the record straight, this request did come to the Capital Improvement Committee and it was discussed with the Chief. Uh, we talked about it, you know, and trying to try and bring it kind of a neutral stand, but uh, it was one of these items that the committee felt that we get back to the wants and needs of the town, and it's not a lot of money, but uh, the committee decided to vote it, and the committee voted not, not to recommend it. Nice to have, but was it really needed? And... I think the committee at the time was looking looking at uh, the dollars as far as the way this budget was playing out this year. And if people have been paying attention, I'm sure a lot of you have been, that money's going to be a little tight. And we've got some big expenses coming down. The 10-3 for the motorcycle obviously is not a big expense. But as Matt referred to, the town here needs to make some decisions because we are going to be hard pressed uh, starting this year with some big numbers and people are going to have to decide what the wants and the needs are and you're going to have to you're going to have to figure that out it's nice nice to want things but do you really need them and so i'm not trying to talk negative about the motorcycle because the motorcycle obviously everybody's seen it in operation for a couple of years but i just wanted to make sure that people understood that it did come to the Capital Improvement Committee 
And to be fair to everybody, they did vote. They did vote it, and they voted not to recommend it. Mr. Hilchey. That's all I have. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, Chief, does this have any effect on, uh, in your estimation, staff retention? You've trained of several officers to do this. Uh, if they're no longer um, something that they'll be able to use, will, will that encourage people to leave? Will, will it help you retain t your, your staff? It's a great question, Tim, thanks. But I don't think it's something that's going to push people in or out whether we have it or not. Do I think it may improve morale day to day? Yeah, I think it gives the new officer something to aspire to. And it certainly, every one of us that's sat at a job over the years knows that jobs can get monotonous. It's something that breaks up that day-to-day -day environment of just jumping in a Mark Cruiser with a cage and gives them an availability to go out and change up that environment. Does it keep morale higher? I think it does, yes. Is there a question in the back? Uh, David Lawless, 11 Sugarloaf uh, Street. My question, Chief, is uh, do, you, do you see it as an effective tool? But n understanding that boosting morale is, is an end in itself to a certain extent, but is it a useful tool? I think it's a useful tool for boosting morale, for traffic enforcement, and the best one of all, which every chief of police in this country is searching for right now, is community relations. We want people to approach police. We always want that positive atmosphere over and over again because we see these negative events every day in the media. So every one of us is searching for it and trying to push it as much as we can. And if this gives me an avenue, I obviously support it. Thanks. A question here? That was? Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Dan, I have yes. a question. To John, um, as you um, laid out, the uh, training is quite in intensive there. Um, What's the final cost of putting an officer through the training? If I kind of add up, it's about $3,500 with their, uh, I know the training's free, but their salary, the hotel rooms, the reimbursement for food, their helmets and gear and stuff like that. If you were to totally outfit a police yeah. officer with a helmet in the whole deal, I think you'd be searching about $2,500. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm very selective in who I will put on it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think a lot of people know, but we have nine full-time police officers and we have about 15 part-time. Remember, I said only four are certified to ride that motorcycle. I'm extremely selective. And as part of that, when they buy their helmet and boots, I make them take it out of their clothing allowance so they have buy-in from it. So it automatically comes out of their own clothing allowance, which they can't spend on other items. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Opposed? Uh, it's a simple majority, so the motion carries. Article 14, Mr. Camosa. Oh, give me a sec. Lost my page. Oh, I'm sorry. I move that the town transfer the sum of $150,000 from free cash to the town's capital expenditure stabilization fund. Second. It was approved by the, uh, or recommended by the Capital Improvements uh, Planning Committee and the Finance Committee as well. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Article 15, Mr. Camosa? I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $35,212 to the snow and ice removal expense account to fund the shortfall for fiscal year 2019. Second. Second. That also was um, recommended by the Finance Committee. Any questions on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 16, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote on the recommendations of the Community Preservation Committee for the fiscal year 2020 Community Preservation Fund budget with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Second. Uh, the CPA meets throughout the year and uh, considers applications. So the way that we've done this historically is they've taken each uh, application that they've made a recommendation on and brought it before you for a vote. So, Mr. Swedland, if you would like to make the first motion. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Alan Swedland from Snowberry Circle. Um, I move that the town appropriate $17,250 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues for the completion of work on the Deerfield Civil War Monument on the town common in Old Deerfield in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Deerfield Historical Commission 
and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion is presented. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries uh, by majority. Second motion, Mr. Swedlin. I move that the town appropriate $9,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues for disposal and replacement of the brick steps and landing at the First Church of Deerfield, located at 71 Main Street, Deerfield, Mass., in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the First Church of Deerfield and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Second. Any questions on that? Mr. Russo. First of all, I love the church, so this doesn't have anything to do with the church. I'm just wondering, we are using money that's been contributed by taxpayers to support a project that hasn't been funded or a building that doesn't fund any of the tax base at all. Um, I am familiar with the church. I've been there a number of times. I know the church raised quite a bit of money a number of years back to replace an organ. I'm just wondering why we're looking at $9,000 to replace their front steps. Uh, Joe Butts, uh, Crestview Drive. Uh, I am the uh, chair of the executive committee from the First Church of Deerfield. Um, we are obviously a nonprofit, um, and the building is a historic, iconic building in the center of Old Deerfield. Uh, there are many community events that happen there uh, beyond the normal worship service on Sunday, including many weddings. Um, a uh, we host the Brick Church Music Series, which happens four times a year, which is open to the public, um, and uh, several weddings, also different events that happen, graduations that happen throughout the year. Um, also, uh, part of the bricks, um, the uh, landing there is on town land, uh, so approximately, I think, 30% of the um, the landing is actually on town land. So it's becoming a safety issue. Uh, there are a number of people that walk in through the church throughout the year. Uh, the, the bricks are, I mean, it's, it's starting to fall apart. So uh, that's, that's the reasoning behind it. Uh, and we appreciate the town's consideration. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yes. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a... Uh, you speak into the microphone. Mr. Moderator, I would like to uh, amend the motion. Go ahead. I move to amend the motion by inserting the words subject to the Department of Revenue approval after the word appropriate to read as follows. I move that the town appropriate subject to the Department of Revenue approval $9,000 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues for disposal and replacement of the brick steps and landing at the First Church of Deerfield, located at 71 Main Street, Deerfield, Mass., 01342, in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the First Church of Deerfield and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. So at this point, there's been a motion to amend, so we're, we're only discussing the amendment to the motion. Town Council has advised me that the Department of Revenue would not grant such an approval or disapproval. It's just not something they do. So you'll have to take that into consideration as well. Mr. Swedland, on the motion to amend. Thank you. Um, I would just add that um, there is uh, quite a bit of experience with the Com Community Preservation Act in terms of projects being proposed, uh, such as the one that the First Church is, is uh, presenting us. What our job is on the Community Preservation Committee is to review proposals that we believe fulfill all the criteria 
that are to be are to be considered and that the budgets are reasonable. We always ask for matching funds, in which case all three of our main proposals tonight have received some matching commitments from either in-kind donations, labor, uh, expertise, uh, and contributions from other organizations. So I, um, there's quite a bit of precedent for churches receiving. Uh, realize again that this is in the historic district in Old Deerfield. It's a historic building, um, unquestionably. And what those precedents tell us is that very oftentimes they are contested in towns, but in general the funding has been uh, forthcoming when the uh, these um, religious organizations can present a case that I think is similar and I think the committee felt is very similar to this particular one. Yes, on your motion to amend. Um, I believe this proposal is for maintenance rather than historic preservation based on the definitions of Mass General Law Chapter 44B, which is the Community Preservation Act. Section 2 defines maintenance is incidental repairs which neither materially add to the value or the property nor pr appreciably prolong the property's life, but keep the property in a condition of fitness, efficiency, or readiness. Section 5B2 further reads, the Community Preservation Committee shall make recommendations to the legislative body, and there's a bunch of stuff in between, for the acquisition, preservation, rehabilitation, and restoration of historic res resources. Provided, however, that funds expended pursuant to this chapter shall not be used for maintenance. Based on the definition of maintenance and the prohibition using CPA funds for maintenance, this, pro this proposal should be rejected. Mr. Butts, do you have any comment on the maintenance versus repair? Restoration? I guess it all depends on your opinion of restoration versus um, repair. Um, it is a historic building. Um, we're restoring it to um, the, the, the historic specs, um, and um, you know we're we're actually putting some skin in the game. So you know we're we're putting you know at least a thousand dollars into it. Uh, we've asked for nine thousand. We're getting a bid for seven thousand. So. Uh, my guess is we probably wouldn't use more than six thousand. Um, so we're trying to be, you know, we're trying to be equitable, we're trying to be reasonable. Um, and uh, again, we, we would appreciate your support. Is there any questions or discussion on the motion to amend? Yes, Mr. Upton. Just a, a quick comment. <clears throat> I'm a little concerned with the definition here and with the maintenance as it was described. It is sounds to me like it's maintenance and supposedly you're not supposed to be using the CPA money for that I'm a little concerned about if if it's not supported with Bruce's motion are we setting a precedent for future requests through the CPA once you open that barn door pretty hard to close it so I hope people think about that a little bit so right now the motion, and I'll, I'll let you speak, the motion is whether to amend it to include subject to Department of Revenue approval. So the maintenance issue is really separate from what, what's being uh, suggested to amend. So if we can just stick to that, we'll come back to the underlying motion, and that's where the maintenance issue could be addressed. So any other comments or question on the motion to amend? So let's take a, on the motion to amend. Just a quick question. The, um, if you could just uh, state your name. Sorry, Julie Chalfant, South Middle River Thank Road. You. you said subject to Department of Revenue approval. Um, are you asking the Department of Revenue to decide whether this is maintenance or repair? Is that why it's subject to Department of Revenue approval? I put that in there to get their interpretation as to whether this is a maintenance issue or a uh, rehabilitation issue. And if it is a maintenance issue, then it would uh, not uh, uh, be a valid request. Is that, something they, is that something they generally 
provided based on? Town Council has stated that they do not. Yes. Uh, we have um, put money towards the Tilton Library steps, um, and that was uh, historically accurate funding um, to bring them back up to use after they were unused. So I don't know if that complies with what they're offering, but I just wanted to remind people um, that we have done that, and whether it was maintenance or repair or restoration, it has been done. Mr. Hilchey. Tim Hilchey. Um, so if I understand what council is saying, um, the governmental agency would not entertain this. So it sounds to me as though adding that language is superfluous and we should move the question and then um, assess whether this is a maintenance issue under the current language. Any other questions or comments on the motion to amend? All those in favor of the motion to amend as read, all those opposed? Aye. So the motion to amend is not carried, so we're back to the underlying motion. Uh, so are there any questions or comments on that? Yes. Uh, the First Church of Deerfield has, does have a preservation restriction with the uh, Mass Historic uh, uh, historical Commission for the premises of the church. Premises are defined as the per uh, church property as shown in its deed. The area that the work is requested is not entirely owned by the church and is outside the Mass Historical Commission preservation restriction. More than two-thirds of the area is on town property. If any work needs to be done, it needs to be addressed by the town and not by a private organization. Part of the reason for the present deterioration of the landing is the use of rock salt on the landing as well as the granite steps. The rock salt has destroyed the existing mortar in the bricks as well as between the granite steps and is also attacking the handrails and allowing the handrails that were funded by CPA money to start rusting due to inadequate care. The existing granite steps show no carefully applied uh, mortar, only an unprofessional attempt to fill the joints between the steps. In general, the landing does not appear to be in that poor condition. The condition it is in is due to improper care, which is contrary to the restriction with the Mass Historical Commission. There's no work, there's no mention of any work being, uh, that would comply with the Mass Historical Commission standards, uh, it, only that it be done in a pattern consistent with the age of the church. Although there is a preservation restriction with the Mass Historical Commission, there is none with the town to protect its investment should the church fail to maintain anything funded with the CPC funds, such as the railings that I had already mentioned that are, that are deteriorating, that we had funded with approximately $18,000 uh, several years ago. I think that should be addressed as well. Uh, because this proposal, I do not feel that this proposal meets the requirements of the CPA, as I uh, reiterated uh, on my amendment, and the proposal is for the majority of property not owned by the First Church of Deerfield. I do believe this, that does not believe it meets the requirements of CPA and should be funded. There are other town-owned historic resources that need tens of thousands of dollars of investment, such as continuing the project in the town cemeteries to preserve and restore damaged or neglected gravestones, the Tilton Library, the old grammar school, and parts of the recently acquired church. There are other major potential projects that the taxpayer will be asked to fund for which CPC, <coughs> CPC funds could be used such as senior affordable housing and recreation projects. That is why I believe we should invest in the town of Deerfield properties that are eligible for CPA, CPA funding before we invest in non-town owned properties. The community fund preservation fund is based on 3% surcharge on our taxable property and therefore should be used for town owned property, our property. Any other questions or comments on the motion? All those, yes. Mr. Sharp. Dave Sharp, South Mill River Road. Sorry, but just a quick clarification. How much of this total project is being asked to be paid for by this motion? I heard $9,000 being requested, and then I heard something about maybe 1000 was being uh, contributed by the church. 
Mr. Butts, would you like to just run through the numbers? Clear. We originally asked for 9,000. Um, seven, uh, our bid came back at 7,000, um, and we would support it with 1,000 of our own. So 6,000, roughly, in total. Any other questions? Yes. Thanks. I'm Erica Franks from Thayer Street. It's not really a question. It's a, I know you don't want to um, make a precedent of us, I guess, repairing churches steps, but this church is historical. It's centered right in historic Deerfield where there is a lot of our tourists and visitors. We have uh, insurance issues if they have accidents. They, <laughs> and, and besides the point, they like to put out lemon water and say, have a drink of really hot days, and you just go up those steps and you feel so welcomed. I think, I don't know that this church is on the list of historic uh, buildings, but I think it probably should be. But I think that it's in the town's interest to, to just keep historical Deerfield looking good. It's a, it's a big, you know, thing. Um, Annette Sanabecker, 8 Baker Lane. Well, if the amount is really $6,000 that you're asking for from the Preservation Act, wouldn't we need to amend that motion to have the right amount in it that you're actually asking for? Mr. Hilchey? The, the language of the uh, proposal says that any unexpended funds will be returned to the, and oftentimes you give a little bit of leeway on pricing because in the, in the time it takes to get to town meeting, have a vote, mortar could go up, brick costs could go up, but in, in general, I think the town's protected by the language. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries by majority. Article 16 is uh, continued. Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town appropriate $32,500 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues for the Indian House and Bloody Brook Tavern Rehabilitation and Restoration Project Phase 2, located at 107 Main Street, Deerfield, Mass in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Deerfield Historical Commission and approved by the Community Preservation Committee. Said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Any questions or comments? Yes. motion. Go ahead. I move to amend the motion by inserting the words and also in compliance with the standards of rehabilitation stated in the United States Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties codified in 36 CPR Part 68 after the words approved by the Community Preservation and by inserting the last sentence to the note motion that reads, any appropriation shall be contingent upon a permanent deed restriction in compliance with Massachusetts Historical Commission recommendations on said property for present and future owners being recorded at the Mass Registry of Deeds, so the motion would be read as follows. I move the town appropriate $32,500 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated res revenues for the Indian House and Buddy Brook Tavern Rehabilitation Restoration Project Phase 2 located at 107 Main Street, Deerfield, Mass 01342, in a manner consistent with the proposed submittal proposal submitted by the Deerfield Historical Commission and approved by the Community Preservation Committee, and also in compliance with the standards for rehabilitation stated in the United States Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic proper properties codified in 36 CPR Part 68, said funds to be expended within three years under the direction of the Select Board, and any unused funds to be returned to Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Any appropriation shall be contingent upon a permanent deed restriction in compliance 
with Massachusetts Historical Commission recommendations on said property for present and future owners being recorded at the Massachusetts Registry of Deeds. Would you like to comment briefly on your amendment? Like to explain your amendment? Yes. The deed. <clears throat> the deed from the Indian House uh, Memorial to the Comtuck Valley Memorial Association has no permanent restriction on the property for any successors, other than, or other future owners of the property, only to PVMA. The Town of Deerfield CPA application states that any investment in historic resources must be protected by a permanent historic re restriction. PVA has submitted a letter to have a reasonable permanent restriction attached to the property, but with no particulars of such restriction. At the least, any award should be contingent on a restriction similar to the same restrictions as required by the Mas Massachusetts Historical Commission and be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. This would protect Deerfield's investment if something were to happen to the property or its ownership was transferred. There is also no mention in the application that any work would comply with the United States Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties as required by the Community Preservation Act. The application only states that the work, work would be, quote, appropriate to a colonial revival design, unquote. No plans or design were submitted with the application. Are there any questions or comments on the amendment? I don't understand a thing that you said. I think, I, I think it's a reasonable request, and I, I'm just going to ask town council to summarize briefly, but these types of deed restrictions are, are contained within the statute, so council. So what the... Uh what uh, Bruce is saying is that uh, he wants included in the motion that a deed restriction has to be entered into uh, relative to a preservation restriction, which includes any rehabilitation to be consistent with the Secretary of the Interior standards. Uh, the CPA committee, um, which actually is quite advanced, they have an agreement actually before they give the money out that requires the same thing. So this amendment is fully in order and is consistent with what the CPA committee does. Does someone have a question? Uh, sure. Briefly. Thank you. Uh, John McKinnon from Hatfield. I'm the executive secretary and the chairman of the buildings committee at the uh, PVMA. Um, we have had discussions uh, and a vote of our uh, board to approve any uh, any restrictions prior to uh, receiving any funds from the town. Uh, this hasn't been, wasn't officially part of our proposal, but we have had conversations, and uh, the acting chairman and I have clarified that that is understood that that will take place uh, prior to us uh, expecting to receive any funds from the town. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so the motion to amend, all those in favor? We're going to come back to the underlying motion once it's amended. So this is just to amend. So all those in favor? Opposed. So the motion to amend carries. So now we're back to the motion as amended, uh, which is the actual grant of the fund. So are there any questions about the grant as proposed? Yes, sir. Briefly. The, uh, there again, this has nothing to do with the church or PVMA or anything else like this. This is strictly a matter of usage of the CPA funds that um, need to be really looked at long and hard. The summary of the application for the uh, uh, PVMA for the Indian House Memorial says the replacement of clapboard siding on the Indian House, Mem Indian House Memorial with materials and fasteners appropriate to a colonial revival de design. And that was the reason for uh, the amendment to require that it con uh, complies with Chapter 44B and the United States Secretary of Interior Standards. The property was conveyed into PVMA in 1992. 
they evidently disregarded repairing and restoring the outside until now, where, where most of it is unsalvageable. What has been repaired does not meet historical restoration standards. I went up there uh, about a week or week and a half ago, and I took a long, hard look to see what had been done and what had not been done. Uh, it has there has been absolutely no uh, effort to make any kind of repairs in any kind of historical standard. It has just been a patch on a patch. Uh, phase one included replacing 78 percent efficient furnace with hot water and various, and while the outside continued to deteriorate instead of ensuring a tight exterior. There appears to be no permanent restriction on the property or, or in, for any accessors or other future owners of the property, only to PVMA. i have already mentioned the amendment is uh, going to take care of that. Now, The, uh, I'm, I'm taking a quote right out of the uh, financial report for the PVMA by their auditor. The auditors, the auditors state, in quotes, the association does not have a spending policy. By their financial statements, the board of directors voted to borrow from their capital investment account almost $184,000 to cover operating costs and then voted not to reimburse the capital account with that money. The money could have more than paid for this phase. Instead, they op, uh, chose to uh, allow their assets to deteriorate. Uh, they have approximately, by their financial reports, uh, only a couple million dollars. If you go by market value, they have over $5.2 million. Of course, it, it's one of those situations, uh, asset rich and uh, cash broke. The, the town of Deerfield is going to be faced with many of its own opportunities to use CPA funding for projects for historic, re for historic rehabilitation requests, a recently acquired church, possibly the old grammar school, Tilton Library, as well as there's still much to be done in the cemeteries. There could also be requests for recreation over $300,000. Affordable senior housing could easily be tens of thousands. We give CPA money away that was funded with taxpayer money to tax-exempt entities then when a town has projects eligible for CPA use, it will not be there, but the taxpayer will ask, be asked to dig deeper in their pockets, and as usual, tax-exempt entities would not have helped to fund any town project. I am therefore asking your support to reject this proposal. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I just want to remind everyone that um, the Indian House and PVMA is free to Deerfield town residents. And so um, we get value out of that um, building. <coughs> yes. The building is part of a federally designated Old Deerfield Village Historic Landmark District and as, as such is clearly project worthy under the Community Preservation Act. The Indian House Memorial does provide educational programming, as Julie alluded to, for Deerfield and the surrounding areas. And the Deerfield residents do have free access to Memorial um, Museum. The importance of the Indian House to Deerfield is reflected in the presence of our town seal. And I'm sure we will have many 350th um, events related to that. Any other questions or comments? A new point, or do you have a new point, or have you already? Uh, it's kind of an emphasis on the existing point. I think we're we're very, we're very set. Important. Any other questions or comments? I, I can't do that. Only you can. There's been a call of question. We'd need a two-thirds majority vote in order to take this to a vote. So, all those in favor of calling the question. Opposed. The motion has been called. There's no further debate. All those in favor of the motion as presented. Aye. Opposed. The motion carries by simple majority. Uh, Mr. Hilchey. I move the town transfer 27,000, 10 percent of the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues to the reserve for open space as required by General Law Chapter 44B. 
briefly explain uh, just the next, Mr. Hilton, if you can just explain the next couple of motions. Um, the, the next few motions are um, sort of requirements of the CPA Act, which, were, which says that um, certain types of um, use set-asides have to be made each year for specific categories like historic preservation, um, open space, and community housing. And, and that only applies if you haven't expended more than 10 percent in, in a particular area. So, so it, it's correct that the 10 percent is the minimum that you're required to set aside? That's correct, yes. And in administrative, it's 5 percent. Any questions on that? All those in favor as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Hilchey. I move the town transfer 27,000, 10 percent of the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues to the reserve for community housing as required by General Law Chapter 44B. Same type of motion, Mr. Hilgey? Yes. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Hilgey. Mr. Swedlin. I move the town appropriate 13500 or 5% 5 from the Community Preservation Fund 2020 estimated revenues for Community Preservation Committee administrative expenses. Yes. Question is, what is the balance in the administrative fund? We're going to defer to town accountant on that. There is no such administrative fund. It's just an allocation towards administrative expenses. And at the end of the year, it goes into the un undesignated fund balance if they don't spend it. Okay. I think you were given um, a handout, or you could have picked up a handout that said they spent a total of 13500 in the entire time that they've been in existence on administrative expenses. So they rarely use it. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Swedlin. I move the town transfer the sum of $143,750, the balance of the Community Preservation Fund 2020, 2020 estimated revenues to the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 17, Mr. Camosa. I move the town transfer from free cash $33,965 for funding the tuition and transportation expenses of students attending the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School for the 2019 and 2020 school year. Second. This was this amount was recommended by the Finance Committee. Any questions on that? Just how many students? Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 18. I move the, I move the town um, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $46,998 and transfer the sum of from free cash to the reserve fund to provide for extraordinary or unforeseen expenditures under Mass General Laws Chapter 40, Section 6 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019. Any comment on that, Mr. McDaniel? This is, this is a reserve fund we carry every year just in case something comes up that was unforeseen, a, a major expense that we, we couldn't foresee um, or department head couldn't couldn't foresee, and they would then come to the Finance Committee to ask for a transfer to cover such expense. And if that money didn't get expended, where would it go at that point? Back to free cash. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 19, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $10,000 from free cash to be used for the town's 350th anniversary celebration. Ms. Schwarzenegger? This is seed money, or, uh, and hopefully this will be used for leveraging donations um, to start our planning for our 350th um, birthday party uh, in 2023. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 20, Mr. McDaniel. I move the select board is hereby authorized pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30B, Section 12B to enter into and negotiate contracts as the select board deems necessary or beneficial to the town for terms of not more than five years. Second. This just allows us to enter into contracts, you know, um, for not more than five years. All those, in f any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 21, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the Board of Assessors is hereby authorized pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30B, Section 12B, to enter into and negotiate contracts as the Board of Assessors deems necessary or beneficial to the town for terms of not more than five years. This is just so assessors can do our certifications and with our vendor. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Article 22. I move the town rescind the unused borrowing authority of $1,468,985 as voted under Article 1 of Special Town Meeting, January 25th, 2016. Mr. McDaniel? So this is, um, these are areas sometimes we ask for a large amount of money uh, and then we don't end up using it all or, or some of it goes to, uh, we get grants, other things like that. So this is just rescinding our borrowing authority uh, that we don't need to borrow the money any longer. Is that correct? Or no? This was related oh, to the school roof. This is related to the school roof. We didn't spend all this amount on the school roof. We got grants to cover it. So. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 23, Mr. Camosa. I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $105,100 from proceeds from sale of real estate fund per Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 63, and transfer the sums of $194,172 from free cash for a total sum of $299,272 to fund full repayment of the loan related to the purchase of the former Oxford property. Any comment, Mr. Camosa? Yes. Uh, you know, this past uh, year we um, collected uh, some money, about half a million dollars from the sale uh, to um, the machine shop that moved into there and to the bakery people along with these funds uh, will pay off that property. And the money that was taken from free cash, uh, the finance committee uh, decided that the amount of money the town would uh, generate in interest would be far less than what we're paying in interest for the loan. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 24, Mr. Decker. Just grab a microphone. I move that the town vote pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 16, in parentheses, D, to approve an authorization of debt in the amount of $1,826,664 as voted by the Frontier Regional School District Committee on April 4th, 2019 to pay the cost of the Frontier Regional School District's capital. Improvement program including, one, the improvement payment of $630,000 to pay the cost of designing and constructing a new track including all related oversight and two, one million one hundred ninety six thousand six sixty four to pay the cost of the various other capital improvements including HVAC upgrades upgrades to the library media center carpet replacement associated with such the foregoing project and to further provide that the said approval should be subject to the contingent upon an affirmative vote of the town to exempt the authorizations, authorizations required for the payment of its share 
of the annual of said amount from the limitations on taxes imposed by Mass General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 21C, in parentheses, Proposition 2.5, so called. Mr. McTann, would you like to comment? I'd be happy to comment. Um, this, um, <clears throat> over the last several years, um, we've been looking at the capital needs of this building, and um, there's been several iterations of ideas and designs about the needs uh, of capital here. Um, so then a, a group of select, mem select board members, um, school committee members from, from different towns all got together and um, uh, we used the um, services of Joe Markarian to kind of put together a capital plan to start addressing the major needs of the town, uh, of this building. Um, and so we, th there were many different ideas going around and we, we've kind of settled on the most important needs that we could put together through the um, through town meeting so that we, we could do a, a, a debt exclusion. Because these are, these are large, um, large expenditures, the, the needs are great. And um, you know, these are items that get cut out of the budget every year because expenses, you know, it's, it's, the operating budget is, is large enough. So, so we forego some of the larger capital expenditures over the years. And um, these, these are the items that, that need to be addressed. Mr. Kamosa. Yeah, I, I would like to address this issue. Um, I was on that committee that Trevor spoke of earlier. And um, for the first four months, I was quite frustrated because I never heard anything about options or other things we could do, just how are we going to get the money. And as Trevor alluded to, that this gentleman was brought in from the FERCOG to help figure out how we're going to finance this. The track was one big problem for me. I went out there on a rainy day when I could see all the puddles. I couldn't find a puddle that I could sink a quarter in. I found two cracks in the track that I couldn't put a quarter in and took photographs of this. And I asked the question, I begged the question, why do we need a new track? Well, it's 20 years old. I go, but it's flat, it's soft, you can run on it. It doesn't look like a new track, but why do we have to tear it all apart and just put a new one on? It was never discussed. It's, that's what we need. Let's move on. There were some bleachers that they spoke about. We needed bleachers. And I went there and I spoke with the superintendent. I shouldn't say the, the, the building manager or whatever, um, uh, building maintenance guy. Well, the bleachers pull out difficult. Well, why do they pull out difficult? Because the plastic wheels have little flat spots in it. So why not just replace all the wheels? Well, do you know how many wheels there are in here? And that's the thing that I constantly ran into. And I, although there are things that need to get improved, and I just don't think that allowing them this amount of money to just go and buy everything that they want is a very frugal way to move forward. And this is not going to be the end of it. There are other things coming down the road for this property as well. It's just something to think about. Mr. Modesto? <clears throat> Uh, so this is a, uh, the vote for this is to approve the borrowing. Since our regional agreement does not have any language around capital improvements, it has to go to all four towns to allow us to borrow for this capital. So that's number one. So all four towns have to agree with this. Sunderland voted it last Friday. This money that we're looking for here is we are going to borrow for a series of projects, um, and we are only going to be borrowing um, the money that we need for each project as it, as it comes through. Um, and so the actual debt assessment set to you by Frontier will not occur until actually FY21 or FY22. So this is not affecting this year's budget. In response to Mr. Camosa's um, uh, comments, um, he did not attend the meeting where we did a walk around. And we went and saw each of the uh, issues of, that are, are need to be addressed um, by the capital plan. This is also part of a larger capital plan. What we did is we took the larger items of over $100,000 and grouped them together um, that we can foresee over the next 10 years. This building is 21 years old since its last renovation. As you can look around, there are areas that are tired. I mean, you can look at this carpet itself when we talk about it's. You have 
hundreds of teenagers walking around this building and adults and community members, and there's just areas that are tired that need to get addressed, and we can't afford to do it with inside our budget. So, you know, we're obviously looking for to borrow to take care of each one of these projects. Um, and we're gonna borrow through a series of notes. Um, the notes will be, um, each one of these projects will be paid, will be borrowed within the first five years of this 10-year loan process um, to take care of that. The lion's share is the track and I respectfully disagree with Mr. Camosa. We brought out an expert to look at resurfacing the track. If you go out there, it's been patched several times over the last 10 years, and they will not guarantee the work of a new surface put on top of it. So we have to go down, when you have a track, you have an artificial surface on top of an asphalt surface. They have to redo the asphalt. The gentleman who came out to look at the track, we had two different companies come out. We got the same um, report that you need to do both the, the surface and the subsurface. They said that this track has held up very well. It was very well installed the first time around, and it is time to get it redone. So um, while well, you, know, you went and did your own investigation, um, the experts say otherwise. Um, the, also, the bleachers are not part of this, um, they're not part of this borrowing ask. Part of the capital improvement committee was looking at all the problems. So if you're gonna come to the towns and ask for money, what we were said is, you better not come this year and then come next year looking for more. So we try to look at what we have for the, over the next 10 years. So this is part of a comprehensive plan to not only borrow for the big things, but we're also going to be taking care of projects out of free cash, which is our E&D, um, each year and, be, and create a capital fund, a capital savings fund, um, capital improvement fund, excuse me, to address these things. The, all these things were not in place before. So just like as the town is trying to do better planning around capital improvement, we're trying to do the same thing at the frontier level. And so what we need is your authorization, um, your approval for our authorization to borrow, and then we will assess um, as part of the regional agreement. Deerfield has looped in that this is gonna be contingent on a debt, excess, debt exclusion vote. Um, it just depends on town. This is the only town that has a, has a large portion of this um, debt being the largest town. Other towns are paying for it in other ways. So it's up to the town on how they wanna pay for it. That, that language is, was put in by um, the town government. Uh, we can start down here. Thank you. Lynn Rose, um, McClellan Farm Road. I just want to say I have a job working for over around 150 schools and municipal buildings. And the reason I have a job is because there was deferred maintenance. And I really want to support this proposal because, you know, 21-year-old carpets doesn't seem like a lot, but it starts to cause asthma. If you don't deal with the parking lot and things, I mean, I haven't looked at specifically this parking lot, but trip hazards. I just did training on trip hazards, and it's really hard to go to a school and talk to people about, be careful about tripping when the infrastructure uh, is, a, is a real hazard. You know, things like replace rubber roofs that are flat. Leaks become bigger problems when you have deferred maintenance because they become mold, and if you have any kind of asbestos or... This building was redone. I don't know if there's any asbestos left. But things like that just create more problems. Um, upgrade and repair the HVAC systems. Codes change. You know, equipment's only designed to live so long, and so the kids have the ventilation is not as good. It's harder to replace parts. You end up having to have them fabricated. I mean, this is what I deal with every day. This is why I have a job. It costs these schools so much more money to manage when you let when you have deferred maintenance. So I just really want us to think ahead. I'm really I'm really grateful. My kids in the school district, I'm really grateful that there's this kind of planning going on. Comment? Uh, yeah, there was just a couple more over here. We'll we'll get to the table. Mr. Gilmore. Are we authorizing to um, borrow this amount of money from the town of Deerfield's authorization or for the whole district? Yes. So is this, you know, uh, we've got 51% or whatever the number is of this number that, that's that, we'll, correct. that we'll have to cover. That's okay, correct. I just wanted to have a clear case. The, Thank the you. The town's not borrowing it. No, the school, the well. That's <laughs> no, but. We're not but borrowing it, but it's coming out of our money. Sure, but it's. Right. Yeah, we're paying for it. Mr. McDaniel. I, I just also wanted to add to this is that, um, when I joined the committee, um, you know, we, we did a lot of work and there was selectmen from all over. We, we also, I believe the, the intention is to con reconstitute that committee again with a, with a um, member from each select board, 
uh, e-school committee kind of getting together in, in a room. So we, we have buy-in and support throughout the full community. Um, I'm not sure what that makeup will be, but I think one, you know, influential people have been involved with this issue. And to just look at this, as we have in our town, a capital improvement planning committee, to look at these things. So it won't be just an automatic, you know, we're automatically going to do this. We're going to look at when we can fit it in, and, um, or that committee will, will look at when they can fit it in and, and, and have oversight, you know, on it. So, and it, is this really needed? Do you just need the wheels or do you need the whole bleacher? So that stuff will still get, still get looked at down the road. Sir? Yes, and, and you'll have to vote on this. Again. James Olszewski, Hager Crossroad. <coughs> on the track, I could probably come up with a couple more experts to give you the exact same price, but they're trying to make money. And I've been, run, I've been on that track just this year, and it's in really great shape. And if you fix it properly, it'll be fine. It's like potholes. If you fix them Poorly, you'll have a pothole next year. If you fix them correct, they stay for years and years. So it's just one of those things. I just want to echo on what Trevor said. Part of this plan, if you, there was a handout that I uh, provided at the front of the room. There's a website, a link to the full capital improvement plan, which talks about what the oversight is, because I know there is a fear. Um, we, when you talk about you're giving this money, and can this money, if it's not used for this, use, be used for other projects? No, there's specific language that's going to be used for this project. The oversight is made up of a board of a select board member from each town and a school committee, a frontier school committee member from each town. So it's, again, we were trying, really this, this committee was trying to create more transparency than ever we've had ever before within capital um, planning. And so that um, as we go through these projects, it's not just going to be handed over to the school administration and then the municipal oversight dis disappears. That this committee is going to continue to oversight, oversee these projects you know, through, the, through their completion. So um, I know that's always been, you know, been in working in this community for the last 10 years. I've heard that um, being a concern about oversight and blank checks and that kind of stuff. But um, the, the committee really wanted to make sure that was in place. Yes. You're looking. Oh. I had a couple of questions. You're looking for authorization for 1.8 million, and I've heard that there may be a request for um, CPA money under the recreation. Uh, if for some reason that is awarded, is that 1.8 million going to be reduced, or is that going to be backfilled with other capital projects? So basically, we will. We will be taking out notes for each portion of the project. The track was pulled out as one number just because it was the lion's share of those other projects. But if you go online again, it kind of gives the general estimates of each one of these projects. And again, we have to get general estimates because you can't go out to bid a project unless you got the money to pay for the project. Um, so what, we are, what you're saying is, can you use CPA money to take care of the track? Well, Deerfield could choose to pay the, when we put out the debt assessment for the track loan to use CPA money, absolutely. You'll have to figure out how that works, and it might be a good option for you having the track in your own town. So then you could defer, not defer, you could pay off that portion of the, of the debt that was assigned to your town using CPA funds. You can pay for your debt however you want, depending on what you have. If you have free cash, if you want to make it part of the, your general budget, it's up to you. Um, Frontier sets, you know, we basically, have, as we're a third party, um, in, within that, and we give you a debt assessment, just like we assess you for the operation budget, we assess you for transportation, and as we did when they did the renovation here, we then will give you a line item for a debt assessment. The debt that we, we did for this last renovation was paid off about, I think it was three or four years ago, and we've been without debt for about three or four years. So um, it's a bill that's disappeared, and it's going to come back. And again, um, you know, we have to stay on the maintenance of these buildings. You know, in 10 years, will we be back for more money? Look around, we absolutely will be. But this is the idea that we can plan, we can plan our spending, um, and, and this is the, 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 the avenue we decided to go. Uh, now the other comment I do want to make is you suggested that uh, you're going to use your free cash, excess and deficiency, whatever you want to call it, uh, to fund some of these uh, other projects that were in the original budget. I just want the townspeople to understand that 
basically what that means is their request for a budget is going to go up by that forty-five or fifty thousand dollars next year no. because they won't be using that excess and defi uh, deficiency to offset their budget request. I, this is my belief. Mr. Modesto. So that goes down a, a complicated stretch. So excess. So Frontier calls its free cash excess and deficiency, and we're allowed to carry over up to five percent each year um, from one year to the next. You, if you're, if you look at excess and deficiency, um, right now we've been using it to pay down um, the assessments to the towns, okay, and we've been using portions of it to take care of small projects. And the idea within the capital plan is to continue to knock off the small projects. When I talk about small projects, thirty thousand dollars here, fifteen thousand dollars here. Um, the next school committee meeting, we had to replace some of the AC units that broke down before this thing um, for fifteen thousand dollars. So some of those smaller things will come out of. Um, excess and deficiency. Um, the, the idea from the, this, uh, the committee was looking at a third, a third, a third. A third to pay down the assessments, a third to look at capital improvement, and a third you hold on to um, for emergencies. So it, it, that's kind of the, the idea around that. If you're saying that we'll be spending that on capital, um, you'll be using that money for capital improvements and therefore changing the assessments to the towns, it gets into a tricky kind of formula because we do have to pay for maintenance and upkeep in this building. You can, we can not, we can put it into the general budget and assess the towns differently, or we can take it out of, um, out of E and D and, and pay for it. So it's just a matter of where you're pulling your money from. So I, I kind of, I disagree with your saying there on that. It, it's, you know, it's not going to affect the assessments of the towns. If we use all the money up and, sp and spend it poorly, sure, but that's not the, that's not the plan. Thank you. Right here. <clears throat> Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. I have a question about <clears throat> understanding what this says about Prop 2 and a half. Are we, uh, and process and mechanism and stuff, because if we vote yes on this tonight, does that mean we then have to have a Prop 2 and a half override vote, town vote? If necessary, yes. It would be contingent on a, a favorable Proposition two and a half override as a separate vote. As a separate vote. Okay, yes. thank you. Mr. Russo? I'm sorry, I think I sometimes sound like a broken record. We spend capital in this town, we build things, we spend all this money to build things, and then we don't take the time or spend the money to take care of what we have, and we come back 10 or 20 years later, we need to build it again. All I'm asking. If any of you are members of the South Deerfield Fire District and you've seen what they've done to budget their money, they built a new fire station back in 1990 or so. Immediately they put money away to repair a roof. They put money away to repave the parking lots. And I know we don't all have this luxury, but we just did a, a roof on the school a couple years ago. There's no money in here going into the fund to re-roof the school next time. So does that mean we're not going to re-roof a school and we're going to need to build a new elementary school in another 23 years or so? I don't know. But all I'm asking is, can we please get to a point where we spend sufficient money on maintenance to take care of what we have? Is it a matter of going out looking at the track every year and every time a crack pops up because it's been in the winter and it froze, can we take care of it? Can we have the roof inspected? Can we get the HC, HVAC units worked on? on a regular basis so that they last like they're supposed to and they run more efficient. And I'm hoping as we rep repair or replace these HVAC units, we're putting in units that are more efficient, that are going to save energy costs down the road, so at least we get that benefit out of this. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel. Just, uh, it's a great, great point, Matt. They, um, that, that, part, that capital stabilization was going to be part of this budget, was going to be part of this request. But um, it's a large request, so we're trying to be as frugal as we can. I agree with you. We, we were hoping to put maybe $100,000 a year in capital stabilization here that the, that the new committee would manage and, and do exactly what you're saying. And that it's important to do. We just felt it was too big of an ask right now to ask for it. But in the future, we would love to do that. I agree. It needs to be done. No, no, it's not. You need to put it. Right. 
I agree with you. I would lo I'd love to put it in there right now. Any other questions or comments? Yes. So we, we approved this tonight. Um, all we're approving is that the, the school can borrow the money, the district. Yes. Then the town's going to have to go to an a, a election to vote a debt exclusion. Has that election been set? Will looking, it? No, it hasn't been no. set yet. We're looking, I think, sometime in June, right? Will it be a special election? Will it be any other things on the election? Well, we'll get to that article next. Okay. I'm just concerned that, like special town meetings, you get 10, 20 people out. Special elections, you're going to have the same thing. I'm concerned that it's not on the annual election, annual town meeting election. No, it's not. I know. I'm concerned. Any other questions or comments? No other questions or comments, so we can skip right to the vote. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 25, Mr. McDaniel. The long one, sorry. <laughs> um, I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of $19 million to pay for costs of upgrading the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility and, <laughs> I can't read and, and perpetuities uh, there too, including, uh, but not limited to, planning, design, permitting, bidding, and construction, as well as all other costs, incidental and related, related thereto, and to meet this appropriation to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow under general law chapter 44 and or any other enabling authority and issue bonds or notes of the town or otherwise upon such terms as the treasurer and the select board shall deem and to provide that the debt shall be paid pursuant to ch uh, section 5 chapter 343 acts of 1935 whereby the town must pay 25 percent of the capital improvements to the sewer system and from the general fund of the town and 75% shall be borne by the abutters to the system uh, from the revenues of the wastewater enterprise system. And that the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount and in connection therewith and that the select board is authorized to enter into any necessary agreements to effectuate the project, to, ex, uh, to expend all funds available for the project, and to take any other action necessary to carry out the project, and further that any, uh, further that the, any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of cost approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount, and further provided that, the, that said appropriation shall be subject to and contingent upon the affirmation vote of the town to exempt the amounts required for the payment of interest and principal on said borrowing from the limitations on taxes imposed by Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 21C, Proposition 2 and a half, so called. So may I comment a little bit yes. longer than that motion? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to be as brief as I can. It's hard to, um, this is, this is a, obviously a major ask, and it's a major problem that's coming before our town. And um, so I, it's hard to distill three years of study and, um, and $19 million into a couple of minutes, but I'll do my best. So uh, reasons for Article 25. The reason we, as your sewer commissioners and select board, are here tonight asking you to support this article is that the needs are great and the time is short. We've conducted a needs assessment over the last year that was building on the work of the sewer study committee's work over the last several years. We are at a critical point in that we have an opportunity to secure a grant with help uh, with much needed vital, vital work that needs to be completed on our plants. There are different, differing opinions on how the work needs to be completed, but general agreement on what needs to be done. We, are all, uh, we all recognize that 
the most critical infrastructure that needs to be uh, first is the South Deerfield plant. This is the workhorse of our system. The old Deerfield plant is in just as bad a shape, if not worse, but processes much less than our main plant. I'm here tonight to ask for your help in beginning to correct these problems. As a leader in your town, one of my jobs is to look out for the well-being of the residents and to bring to their attention the biggest needs and largest issues facing the town with the help of others um, to build a roadmap of how we feel the best way to begin to fix the issues and put the town on solid footing. Uh, we as your board don't always agree, and to be honest, we did not agree on this issue. We held the vote to bring this issue forward to you for your education and deliberation, and it was a two to one vote. It is not that we don't all agree that this needs to be done, it just, um, it just seems that we differ on how to get it done and the urgency of our opportunities. We don't think, um, we, uh, I don't think we differ a lot, and it really comes down to timing and risk. I believe we have risked too much already and feel we need to move on this issue now. Um, we are not asking to spend $19 million tonight. I am asking that you provide us the authority to borrow. We will not move forward on any plan without your vote to spend uh, any money. We have a chance to secure a USDA uh, low interest loan and possibly significant grant to help us, in, help us in the project. If we choose as a community not to step forward to address this issue, we will um, not have another shot at this kind of help, in my view, and, and it will um, it will go on. Uh, it will go on to a community ready to take that help. Um, we will only move forward with with your blessing, and we will not. Uh, and we will start to design and plan our approach in the most economical way possible. The longer we wait to begin this work, the more expensive it will get. We are facing fines if we have a ca catastrophic failure of ten thousand dollars a day. That uh, works out to over about three million dollars a year, if not more. Um, our approach is to move forward with fixing the critical infrastructure now and not wait any longer for the failure. There is much more on this topic um, that I have learned over the last three years um, since I was elected to the select board, more than I can explain here tonight and get you out of the meeting at a decent time. What I want to get across to you is this. Um, one, we need to get started on this work. Um, the work consists of a new headwork system and, a, and building to get the solids, wipes, all that stuff out of the stream. Um, a secondary clarifier for a backup clarifier, because that's what settles all the, the, all the solids. Um, we have no backup right now. You've approved last um, March uh, to repair the one that we have right now. We have no backup. So we're going to have to do a temporary fix as we, do, as we do that one. This is a secondary uh, clarifier um, to help, help with the process. Um, a new aeration system that will cost less to run. It will be much safer. Um, uh, the change uh, from chlorine to a UV disinfectant system that will allow um, that will that will be much safer for everyone. Um, replace electrical system to bring them up to speed and have a new generator outside, which is safer for employees, and a new alert system for 24/7 notification if something goes wrong. Um, a new sludge holding tank rework that will um, that we are able to discharge more at a time, which will help. Uh, keep the plant running well during difficult times when large volume or other pro problems are happening at the plant. We'll save money only by, um, we'll save money. We, we truck away a lot of sludge, which costs a fortune. We drive it to, the only place left is Rhode Island now. Um, so the less um, waste, less you know, in inefficiencies in that, the better we are. Um, is critical, um, number two, it is critical to the financial well-being of the town. It will be painful, but it will. Um, but we will do all we can to make it as affordable as possible. Um, we can't lose this opportunity for financing help uh, by waiting another year. The plant cannot take another year of inaction. The residents have the ability to vote on this plan before we move forward, and we will not move forward without um, with this plan if there's if if it's not in the best interest of the town. Um, there are some handouts that we had tonight um, just on. A couple of things. One was the, the stuff that was kind of getting into our system, the wipes, the dental floss, the, all the stuff that's just gumming up our system, the fats, the grease. Um, it's just wreaking havoc on the system over the last few years. There's also a very important handout that our, um, I would recognize um, our engineer, uh, David Prickett, um, put together just a two-sided thing that would just kind of show the cost, the 25% to the 
taxpayers and 75% to the users. Um, and then also the inaction or, or what we've done over the years. We've done many things. Um, we studied this for many, many years, and each year it costs more and more money to do. Um, so, you know, I, I know there's going to be a lot of questions. I'm happy to answer those. I'm happy to call on David Prickick to, to, to answer those more technical things that, I, that we can't answer. Um, so I think I'll just leave it there and just see where, the, where it goes and what, what you have for questions. Yeah, let's get some questions right here. <clears throat> Sorry. Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. What happens when Rhode Island won't take our sludge? When where won't the Rhode Island? Well, yes, yeah. I, I don't mean, know. It, since you said that they're they are it. We're at a loss, right? And we can't discharge very much right now because of kind of the tanks that we have. Um, and uh, you know that I got an education in doing this program and and uh, looking at this issue. And you know, our, I always thought. You know, waste comes into a plant, you kind of hang on to it, you treat it, and then it goes out when it's done. Well, it's, it's a constant flow. So uh, no matter, you know, with all this rain lately, flow is really high, and it's cooking through that plant. So you only have a short amount of time to get the bugs to eat it and to discharge off and to get the chlorine to contact before it shoots right in the river. And it's hard to meet permit with very old infrastructure, very, like, they're robbing parts off of one to get another part to go. You can't get the electrical. I don't know. I don't have an answer. Greenfield is looking at an anaerobic digester. Right. Um, you know, Melnick's have one that, that does certain things. It, it's similar to that, I believe. That's going to be a big lift for Greenfield to take on. It may be a solution for us, but I don't have another answer so right now. So how long is our contract with our Rhode Island sludge taker? Well, it's with, um, if I have this right, it's with uh, Solid Waste Management. Um, you know, Western Mass, it's a group of people together that, that kind of deal with this. Um, and, and they just hunt for, you know, it used to be Montague would take it for years. And then... You know that kind of was really risky, and then kind of fell out of way, and it, so it's it's jumped from place to place in Rhode Island. So, so we don't have like a five-year contract. No, so, so no. that's what I'm trying to find out. Is like day. they could shut it off any day. Uh, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm sorry, ma'am. Just one sec. I apologize. Uh, Reed Predmore, um, Grave Street. Um, I, you know, I did some quick calculations on the loans you were talking about, mm -hmm. and that 20-year loan at Two uh, percent. It's going to cost us about one point one six million a year. The forty-year at two and a half percent is going to be about seven hundred fifty-seven thousand a year. Uh, you know, if you equal payments uh, per year. So that you know, those kind of numbers, uh, for one thing, are going to like double the cost of the of the sewage uh, system because right now. The sewage revenues are about 860 or something like that. Correct. And uh, those are not, I guess they're reflected in some of these numbers here, but not. Yes. But not, and the little blue ones don't seem to be commensurate with that. So I, I can help with that. The, these two sheets are, um, there's a couple of different avenues we can go. There, there's the, what we're hoping for is a USDA loan, and that would give us. Um, Hopefully a great, you know, a good rate, maybe two and two, two and a half, two and three quarters, or two and three eighths. Um, we're just not sure what that rate is yet. This is the whole idea is to give this borrowing authority so we can actually get a solid answer from USDA. Um, the state only has about six million dollars to give um, in the whole state for, for any kind of program like this. We're, we're asking for a big chunk of that. Um, we, we still don't know exactly what we'd have. That's why we're kind of just asking for the authority and going forward. The, and, and then so part of that would be a grant and then a, a low interest loan for 40 years. The other option is a state uh, program, which is called SRF. That's, um, that's a program where they give a low, I think it's 2% um, rate, but you wind up um, Having to, having to borrow all that up front. So it's a big cost up front. Your rates would, would jump high. But there is a loan, um, a bit of a principal forgiveness at the end. Um, so it, it gets paid off quicker, like a 20-year mortgage, but, um, but it's a bigger hit right off the bat. Um, I, we still don't know what avenue to go. We're still in the process of kind of moving this forward. But yes, it's, it's, it's going to be painful. It, it, I, don't, I wish I had an easier answer, but... Um, we're trying to make it any way we can do it to get 
the most beneficial grants keep the rates as low as we can. As, you know, we just haven't done, as, as Matt said, we haven't invested for many years putting capital aside. So, that, so the, the hit's going to be steep in the beginning. Okay. Um, I, I guess the other point I'd like to make is that if you get the 20-year loan at 2%, it, you end up paying a total of like $23 million. If you get the 40-year loan at 2.5%, you end up paying $30 million over the 40 years. So, you know, you have to really consider that. Mr. Moderator, if I could ask Dave Prickett, he might have uh, an answer on that um, or just maybe shed some light on, on some of these finances as well and his, his partner. Thanks. So Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Um, for those of you, this is a huge ask. I think Trevor hit the nail on the head. $19 million is a lot of money. One of the reasons that I believe the selectmen put this before the residents is we look at the, the options for how to pay for an upgrade. You have been essentially looking at upgrading your treatment plant back to 1999, 2002, and you can see in this handout four or five times the recommendations have been the same. You built your treatment plant in 1970. It's almost 50 years old. It's largely in the condition that it was when it was built. The town's done a remarkable job maintaining everything that you have, but the can has pretty much been kicked as far as it can. So how do you pay for the upgrade? It's going to happen at some point soon. Well, of the financing funding alternatives, USDA, through a long-term low-interest loan and hopefully a grant, is really the only affordable alternative for the residents. Uh, you can see some of the projections on the back of this handout. One of the things that makes this, this ask complicated is the way USDA works. USDA will not give a community a commitment until they have made an appropriation. So one of the reasons the, the selectmen have, have put this on the warrant this evening is for you to consider acting on this as a first step uh, between now and a potential uh, special election, I believe it's being termed. Hopefully by that point, we'll have a firm commitment from USDA. Here's the terms of the interest rate. Here's the amount of the overall grant. And now you have a, a five-year uh, fixed guarantee from USDA that the residents could then um, make an informed decision at a subsequent uh, special election. I'm just going to take a question down here. I, yep. Go ahead. I guess I, feel, I do understand the urgency of this predicament. Mm -hmm. I want to comment on why are we in this predicament. Mm -hmm. If this uh, wastewater plant was built 50 years ago, why was there no money set aside? I know I moved here about 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and we went through this because the kids at DA had thrown stuff in, and we fixed it at DA then. And it, this seems to me a recurring problem right now that nobody's putting money away. The reason we're putting money into the old Indian house is because that organization did not do proper due diligence with their finances. I want to know if we are committed to this, that from here on out, there is money put away, that 20 years from now, when the system needs you know, significant repairs or improvements, you're not coming to the town for $19 million. Right. You're yep. coming to the town for maybe nine. Right. But I am really upset about the way this happened. Yep. I am also upset about the fact that the, D, D, uh, the one in Old Deerfield, I'd like to know how many actual tax-paying people use that. 20? So it's, I, I can't say what I want to say. Well, it's not. But I they, do want to say. They all pay user fees. I understand that. But this isn't about user fees. This is about funding repairs mm -hmm. or replacements. Yep. And, we, we hope and so the people who are using it the most should really kick in a very large amount of money. Well, we're looking at that. I mean, they're, they're um, through user fees, would be funding the South Deerfield plant first. So, I mean, they're. Through this ask, they are also funding the repairs to this main plant. But you want to take out a loan. What's that? You want to take out a, a large loan, right? Well, between, yes, between, yes, and then pay it back with user fees from the whole, from the whole community and, and through taxation. Uh, yeah, and I'm 75. saying that little taxation part now, we have people, a lot of pe people, individual people, using the system there who are never going to put in that 25%. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I hear you. It's a struggle. And so as a, as a taxpayer here, I do want that addressed. Yes. And, I, and I do understand the urgency and that apparently something really needs to be done here. Yep. 
I don't want to repeat it. I probably won't be alive 30 <laughs> years from now, but I don't think the people then should have to go through this. You make a Money very, needs to be put aside. Very valid point. <laughs> very valid point. We, we hope to do that. I think that the idea was to keep rates low for, for a very long time. It was just a decision by me. You're right. I agree completely. Ms. Schwarzness, did you have a comment? Or? I, I just want to say we're, we're asking for a large amount. We don't know how much it's really going to cost in the end. Um, this is just a very conservative projected amount, so we don't have to come back again. But we did send the warrant article to the USDA to show them that we are had it on town meeting, and hopefully we will send them a, um, a affirmative vote to say that they were serious so that they can give us a commitment. Um, the fact is there just is no money being set aside on the federal level for any opportunities for grants. So this is really the one-shot deal um, for us to have, you know, hopefully a $3 million grant. Mr. Pachork. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I wanted to give you a little lesson in history. The reason I say history is because I was elected to a selectman in this town in 1993. I worked as a selectman for the town for 18 years. I've been on finance committee now for five, six, seven years, whatever. So I've been working in town government for approximately 25 years. When I was first elected, what they did was they said the way the sewer plants run, all the sewer users pay all the fees for operations and maintenance. And anything that's out in the street belongs to the town of Deerfield. Therefore, the town of Deerfield is responsible for it. About 2000, we had engineers working on the plant, and they said that we had to do some major improvements along some of the streets. So we put in two $500,000, two quarter of a million dollar uh, request to re make those necessary repairs. Then in 2002, we got a well intentioned uh, policy request to say that we're sick of contributing money to pay for sewers that we're not getting any benefit from. So that happened, and then all of a sudden, the select board went cold because all of a sudden we got a policy decision. Nobody knew what the significance was. Our town lawyer at the time said, it has no significance whatsoever because it's only a recommendation to the board. The board does not have to follow it. But for 15 years, we didn't do nothing in this town. The sewer users still paid their bills. They always funded the sewer a year in advance. They always had five to $700,000 in free cash in that thing every year. All that money went into free cash for the town because it was commingled. All that money that was in there drew interest and all the interest went to the town of Deerfield. And then we turned around and come up with this uh, problem and with a sewer study committee about 2015 or 16. So I volunteered for that. Then I found out in 2018 what the real story was. I always tried to sell the thing that the sewer is good for the town of Deerfield. It's good for old Deerfield, it's good for South Deerfield. If you take a look at South Deerfield, what they've done because of the sewer, a lot of business was built up. The whole industrial park was built up, which would not have been built up without a sewer. Channing Beat came in here. Yankee Candle retail sales came in here. Yankee Candle up there where uh, Dollar General wanted to go across the street. They turned around, came in there, they put in a septic system. They had problems with that. They had to rebuild that. Then the Yankee Candle office building went in on five and 10. The building that was put in on five and 10, Yankee Candle paid to install the sewer line all, from, all the way from that building, about a mile, to tie into the South Deerfield fire station. That's how far they had to go down to tie into the sewer, because they knew the problems that you could have with a sewer. Now, after I was on this committee for a couple of years, I found out what the real story was. I tried to explain to people that it's a value to you to have business in town. The fact that we have business, we get $10 million that we voted a couple of years ago, and over $2 million came from business. $2 million, $2 million pays for a lot of schools, pays for a lot of improvements, pays for a lot of projects. And then last year, 
2018, I finally found out what the real story was with the sewer. Nobody that was a selectman before me ever told me. And for some reason, we had to find out that this was an act of the special legislature in 1935, and they required certain things to happen. This act could not go into existence until the town had a town meeting vote and voted for it. They had to vote in the affirmative. And I think the vote was 222 for and 109 against and one abstention. Then what they had to do was they also had to make a decision by on this act. This act says that any of the major improvements like that had to be shared. And the shared percentage is between the town of Deerfield, who owns the properties, and the sewer users. The system that was set up was that they had to vote between 25% contribution rate for the town up to 67% contribution rate. Well, in 1935, they set the contribution rate at 25%. That's why we talked about a 25-75% split. Now, since, 19, since 2002, when this memorandum came out, or this policy decision to not tax the non-taxpayers for the system, we never found out until 2018 that that was illegal. So the town didn't do nothing for 16 years, 17, 18 years. And guess what? The sewer users paid their bills. They maintained the, the money in the system for a year. They provided funding so that the town got insurance. And guess what? The town didn't supply one penny to the user for the use of that sewer plant. Nothing. Not a single cent. This year, they're starting to, all the different budgets now have a sewer line. And now they're starting to pay, finally. But for years, the only one who paid anything for those sewer plants was a sewer user. Now, the plants have gone to hell, no question about it, and we've got to do something. And I'll tell you something. I don't like the idea of having to pay 25 percent, my share of 25 percent, and my share of 75 percent. But guess what? I'm still going to support it. And the reason I'm going to support it is because it's really necessary. It's good for the town. It's good for the town to have a sewer. It's good for the town to have businesses with support and pay everybody a portion of their tax bill. They're paying 22 percent of their tax bill every year is paid by business in this town. And what I would like to do is say, I would ask you to support the notion that 75 percent is still going to have to be paid by the sewer users. But this is an opportunity now with the grants that may be available, and you'll know before we turn around and vote on it. But for now, we should support this notion of borrowing or this authorization up to $19 million. Mr. Upton? Be Thank you, Mr. Petroik. I recognize Mr. Upton first. So Just a quick comment. A uh, majority of what Mr. Petroik said I agree with. Uh, there is definitely a need. Uh, I just want to make it clear to everybody so there's not any misunderstandings down the road further. The, nine mean, the $19 million tonight is strictly for the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. You will be approached down the road at some time for additional monies for the old Deerfield sewer plant. So because that needs to be upgraded too. So I just wanted to clarify that for everybody so you know what you're looking at. Um, I, I believe we had an estimate with interest of roughly around $36 million for the two, the two sewer plants. Uh, I'm, and I'm not trying to discourage anybody because I agree with John on what he just said for the majority of it. But uh, I just want you to be aware that there's another portion of this coming down the road in the future. Can I make one more comment? Uh, I believe there's a motion at this point, so we're going to need to entertain that. So is there a motion? So if there's uh, two-thirds affirmative vote to move the question. There'll be no more questions, no more debate. So if people have comments or questions, you would not want to support the, the motion to call it. So all those in favor of the motion as made? Opposed? So the question has been called. 
Uh, all those in favor of the motion as presented? All those opposed? The uh, motion carries by two thirds, which is a requirement. Article 26. Ms. Shores Ness, is my understanding this no action on this motion? or This is the one. Yeah. Oh, this I, has been deleted? I thought, I thought you were going to wait on that. But. Yeah. We're going to pass over it. Ms. Shores Ness on 26? We're going to pass over the. Um, no, not 26. Oh, not 26. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we jumped time. ahead. I move the town will vote to amend the town of Deerfield bylaws by deleting chapter. If you are going to exit, if you could just do so quietly so we can finish up here. Um, deleting chapter 48, town meeting, section 48-2, posting of the warrant and adding a new section 48-2, posting of the warrant in its place. The idea is that we're just not going to um, post it in the newspaper. We're going to have it on the website and our locations in town. There, any other questions or comments? Yes. Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road again. Um, it does not say in the insertion that it's going to be on a website. It just says posted in town hall in four public places in the town. Can you specifically? We will. We, we will need to. I'd like to make a motion to amend to include specifically stated, uh, phrased appropriately, however, <laughs> that it be posted on the town's website, at the very least, emailed to everybody, uh, the reverse 911, the whole schmeal. So we need some type of a written motion uh, to, with some clarity. Uh, it's required to be in writing, any amendment. In the motion... Well, let's just... So, so the motion did not mention the website, correct? Correct. No. Okay, so Barbara, go ahead. Let's just... Let's just let's I would like to address your concerns and I do appreciate your concerns and we spend a great amount of time reaching out to the public but the purpose of the bylaw is to put a legal time stamp on when this meeting was posted and able to be held and once you start making a list of uh, it needs to go in the postings and it needs to go on the cable then it, is, it can't go on cable because that's not capable of, of having such a, a, such a document Right, um, right. So the purpose um, for changing it was to remove the newspaper. It's extremely expensive. It's really not how we reach most of you for the most part. But we do take every uh, opportunity to reach out. Um, these days, it's uh, cable and the website. But I think people are more and more using Facebook. And uh, two years down the road, social media. Who knows? Um, but we need a legal um, bylaw timestamp, it's posted, and it can be held. Um, all the other things, it's hard to kind of wrangle them in and say, when did they all happen, and did it meet the 7 or 14 day? So, so Barbara, you're still committed to putting it on the town website and doing all the we, things you're doing, but right, it wouldn't be we, part of the legal we requirement. Do, we do the cable and the website plus, plus other things, but our legal bylaw, um, we would like it to be a legal posting so that we know that it's been done and we can hold the meeting. Does that satisfy your amendment or would you like to <laughs> proceed with it? No, I'm sorry, it does not. Okay. 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 The website, I understand. If we can, if you go ahead and make the motion, if you can get it in writing so we can. Okay. 
Um, so the motion to amend would read, every town meeting or, or town election shall be called in pursuant of a warrant, notice of which shall be given at least seven days before the annual meeting or an annual sp or special election and at least 14 days before any special town meeting. The warrant shall be directed to the constables or to some other persons who shall forthwith give notice of such meeting by posting attested copies thereof in town hall, the town website, and publication in four public places in the town. That is the motion to amend. Is there a second? Is there any conversation or questions or discussion on the motion as amended? Uh, it does say publication here, but you're just picking back up with the four. Oh, yeah, no, just say, yeah, the four public places. Yes. So the town website in four public places? Correct. Okay. It's just simply inserting comma, the town website, comma, Oxford commas. You had a comment? Yes, I just want to um, support Barbara's comment. Um, over time, we've had so many meetings that have had to been postponed because they weren't properly posted. And if there could be a simpler simplification, um, I think that would be helpful in terms of running meetings in general. So I support Barbara's statement. Thank you. Any other comments? Just, just. I would also support Barbara's uh, uh, recommendation to not put that in the website. And as uh, Ms. Cabaco said, there's many, many times where the um, posting on the websites, even for regular meetings, uh, are not necessarily there. They usually get them there within the 48 hours, but there is missed times. And it's not required that they, they be posted on it. They are always, that I know, of, posted in the town hall. But there has been errors made, and this could turn around and um, uh, force town meetings and special meetings to be canceled because something didn't happen on the website. In the back. Uh, my name is Ava Gibbs on um, River Road. Um, the town website is, uh, there's, I know that there's things, um, if you know to go to the town clerk's link, then great, yeah. you've got it. But if you don't know that, you're quite, you're in a fix. And this is what's happened quite a few times. So I'd like to say that when we say the town website, we're talking about as soon as you go into the town website, the front page, I'm not sure if that's the right terminology, but the home page, it cannot be hidden in the, under the town clerk. We, um, yes. I, I just want to say that, um, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, it, our department's been working on our own page, so so you might see things, you know, how to vote in, in a whole bunch of things on the town clerk page because we're doing that. So to, to Lily's point, um, I just want to say um, we don't have a lot of provisions about when is it posted on the website, uh, what if the website goes down, when did it get posted on the website, was that 14 days ahead, what, you know, who posted, a constable can't put it on the website. I'm, I'm just saying, um, we absolutely do put it on the website. We, you actually can um, subscribe on our website to be notified when we do put something on the website. I don't know if anyone knows that, but um, anyway, we're really reaching out. Um, I just would encourage you n not to, to kind of pinpoint it in the bylaw because that's hard to um, know the timing and whether it was legally posted. Mr. Olmstead, briefly. Yes, the article that's being deleted says every warrant for every town meeting uh, shall be shall be served by posting attested copies, et cetera, et cetera. Said posting shall be at least 14 days and said publications at least 14 days before the time set for holding the meeting. The new one says seven days. Why? Right. So... 14 days. For a special town meeting bylaw, you have to have 14 days. For an annual, you have to have seven bylaw. I'm not sure why it is that we can't have 14 days prior to the town meeting. Right now, we have a motion to amend on whether to put it on the website. So if we can keep the debate on that subject, I'd appreciate it. So Mr. Hilchey? 
Um, just, just an observation um, that the same person who's responsible for stamping this thing in the town be the same person who would post it on the website at the time they're stamping no. it. And then the question would be, if they have to deliver it to four other places, mm -hmm. how are they all going to do it at the same time? It's not posted so the, until the last place. So is the time stamp on the first thing, the one that's the governing agent, if, if that were the case, you could still post it on the website? And no. that wouldn't be the determinant. We so, hire constables to... He, um, we can't hold this meeting until uh, moderator checks the constables okay. posting of, so, the, of the meeting. So, so, so it's a very question. measurable... Right. You know, point a very measurable. Um, so action. that would be the last. The last constable's stamp would be the, the governing thing. The constable no. asserts that all five postings have been posted, and then the meeting it has to okay. be done within that. Good. Thank you for the clarification. Time. I'm just going to take the question back there. Jim Cambius, uh, Greenfield Road. Um, while I understand the reluctance to have the bylaws include like web design aspects, I think there is an element of, you know, I'm sure everyone right now is operating in the best of faith, but we cannot depend on always having selectmen who are acting in the best of faith. And I think um, the lady here and myself, we don't want to have a town meeting which can be essentially carried out in secret you know if, oh we posted it in five places in the town hall in the in the basement and in the closet and in the men's room you know and, no, it's and so town, it needs to be hall. announced in a public forum and yes the newspapers are kind of obsolete now so it needs to be online and that should be in the bylaws is there a question here it's more i think of asking for clarification or comment or something um, is it is it there make is it the barbers making a distinction between posting, which is illegal? You stamp it, you know, April fourth, two o'clock. It's posted, and announcing, which is let as many people as you possibly can know. The posted things. I mean, I used to see them in in the what's now Cheslex Market. They post them in public places in the post office, right? Um, so places where people travel around and see, and then the announcement goes out on the nine. Reverse 911 and the website and all that other kind of stuff. So there's multiple ways to let people know. The posting is the legal way to say it's yes. been announced Bingo. publicly. Correct. Is that right? Yes. yes. Perfect. Mr. Russo. To kind of build on what you mentioned earlier, Barbara, I guess my question for town council would be, if we go to post it and for some reason the town's website is down, or whoever hosts it is down and we can't meet the legal requirement for the time, then we put this whole meeting into jeopardy, correct. I would assume. We couldn't, we couldn't say the return of the warrant was satisfied, correct? Correct. So I'm going to recommend that we don't amend this as stated. I think the intentions there are good. I, I too, am concerned that they get into where they need to, correct. but with technology and I know it's more reliable today than ever, but right. my fear is if it goes down and then we've got to cancel this and push it off a week, it'll be more correct. damage. Mr. Gilmore. Um, I think that letting people know is a lot more important than where you're posting it and everything else. And I think that the argument about whether it's posted in, on the website or not with $200,000 plus in technical support, we should be able to get a website that works. But that being aside, I think that maybe we come up with a policy for letting us know because I didn't know about this meeting. I didn't get reverse 911. I didn't get anything that told me that I had this. And I don't go into the town hall every two days to show the posting. Um, I had a friend that called me and said, are you going to be there? I go, oops. Yeah. So I think getting the word out is probably the important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can't have a productive website, then maybe we should be looking at how to make that better. And from the Board of Selectmen's side of that notification, because a lot of those two days that are missed are missed because we didn't get them posted for a two-day meeting, never mind about a 14-day meeting. Yes. So I guess uh, what I would just say is since the invention of the printing press, there's always the opportunity 
for something not to be read, right? Um, posting it in a, we used to require that it was posted in newspapers. And uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't get my paper on Monday because their presses broke. I get the Gazette, not the recorder. So that issue of being up or not up is, I think, kind of a red herring. I understand what you're saying, there are these legal requirements of posting versus announcing. But I believe that if the intention is to be reached for people to be able to see it and know about it, that clearly the web is the way to do it. And it is 2019. And I think for the same reason that in 1900 we said post it in the newspaper, that we should hold ourselves accountable by putting it on the web. That was... if. That was just my answer to those. I, I understand the problems, but. I think everybody understands the issue at this point. So I, I think we should take a vote on a motion to amend. So all those in favor, this would not be an uh, affirmative vote on the entire motion. It's just to add the language regarding the website. So all those in favor of adding that language. Just keep your hands up if you would. All those, Mr. Hunter, were you up? Uh, all those opposed? Twenty-two, I haven't got here, there were twenty in, in favor, so the motion does not carry. So we're back to the underlying motion as presented. Is there any discussion on that? And that may be the appropriate time if there's a question on the seven or fourteen days. years that I've lived in town with 14 days, why are we changing it to seven? Ms. Hancock? Um, it, it was written to be more in compliance with the, the law, which calls for the original bylaw um, was um, a bit wordy. So, Barbara, are you saying yes. that 14 days is not in compliance with the, with the state law? No, no, I'm just saying the Mass General Law calls for a seven-day posting for an annual town meeting and a 14-day posting for a special town meeting. So that is the minimum, the minimum amount of time. Not to say that we wouldn't post it 14 days ahead, um, but it has to be seven days for an annual town meeting. Unless the bylaw that we have in town says 14, which it says now. Address something. Yes. Uh, just to, just for a point of clarification, uh, one of the basis behind the seven day notice is that um, almost all towns have a specific date for their town meeting that doesn't change. It's also in the bylaw, mm -hmm. as but opposed warrant, to special town meetings, which um, are whenever they're called. It's it's not the posting, the timing of the posting. It's the posting of the warrant. We have a twenty seven or twenty eight article warrant. Doesn't it make sense to post that as early as possible so that everyone who is interested can get a hold of the warrant and see what's going to be discussed 14 days or, in this case, seven days ahead of time? Mr. Hilchey. Can I ask a question about when the warrant was actually finalized? How many days before this meeting was the warrant finalized? It wasn't finalized 14 days ago, was it? No. Was it no, like, finalized seven days ago? The warrant, this year, the warrant, we followed the, by, the current bylaw. So the annual town meeting, although required by Mass General Law, is seven days. It was posted, I believe, 17 days in advance. It was more than 14 days in advance. Mm -hmm. It was the week before the 14-day requirement. So, but that's a significant effort mm -hmm. um, to get the warrant posted, which is one of the reasons why your warrant only says a sum of money. So when you get your warrants posted, 
um, oftentimes they don't have the dollar values in them. And so that's why we present this motion packet, which has all the dollar values. But normally in, in communities, when you have um, enough time to post your warrants, you have time to put those sums of money in your actual warrant that gets posted and distributed. So that's one of the things that we'd like to do in the future as so well. So the initial warrant is sort of a placeholder so you can get specifics into it. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. More time for this. Move the question. All those in favor. Uh, second. second. All those in favor. Aye. Opposed. Question's been moved. All those in favor of the motion as presented. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries by simple majority. Article 27 is a citizens petitioned article. Yes. Okay, so there's no motion on the article. Article 28. There's no, uh, there's no report. You're right, but I think there's... Mr. Ilchie, were you just going to... Just make the motion. There'll be no second, and you can speak from there. Okay. I, I move that we remove this um, from consideration this evening. Thank you. Thank you. That motion has been removed. And with that, uh, we would take a, a motion. Uh, oh, we got 29 still. Yeah, at this point, we, I would move to adjourn, adjourn the meeting in the polls. To, to, I, I moved the meeting adjourned to meet in the polls at the meeting room at the town offices, 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield, on Monday, May 6, 2019, at 10 a.m. for the purpose of elections and at the closure of the polls dissolve. Second. Before we adjourn, I do want to thank FCAT for a phenomenal job tonight. Yeah. And thank you, thank you, everyone, for sticking around for the full meeting thank and participating. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.